<laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Lazarus Expedition, where falling off a cliff is a realistic solution to your problems. There you go. Spoiler oh, alert, Neil. Damn. Don't tell them. It's not flying. It's falling with style, actually. Hey, you owe Tom Hanks money. No. He voiced Woody. He failed the reference. He failed the reference. Hey, look I don't even yeah. know who voiced Buzz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know who voices Buzz either. Put this in the... Never mind, I fucked up. Now I fucked up. <laughs> Tim Allen? <laughs> restart the stream. This is a disaster. Yeah, restart. Well, okay, what do you okay. do? No, oh, sorry. no do-overs in the last... We'll be right back, guys. We'll be back. <laughs> Loop the fucking thing. <laughs> All right, everybody. Okay. We're live with the Lazarus Expedition. How you doing, everybody? Good show? I'm doing hey. fantastic. Yeah, doing um, great. Uh, looking forward to rappelling down a cliff and definitely not falling to my death. True. Um, what have I been doing this week? Well, thanks for asking. Uh, I've been playing Zelda. That's what I've been doing. It's super good. It oh, my, I fucking love it so much. It's, it's great. Yeah, yeah. It's boss. There's no other words for it. It's just, it's just everything you want Zelda to be. And it's made me want to go back and play all the old Zeldas as well. What a great franchise. Yeah, same. I think the game is just filled with like these moments where you have like oh here's like a bunch of systems and then like you connect them like and you're like oh that's sick when you start like gluing items together and stuff it's, it's fucking amazing yeah it's such a great make mate you got to make a hover bike they're so fucking good it makes the the whole like underground depth bit so much more fun wait so do you just have a downward facing fan with like a plank <clears> and a steering wheel no it's you get two fans and a steering wheel and you kind of attach the two fans to either side of the steering wheel but not straight down like at a 45 degree angle so they're kind of pushing forward and down a little bit and you just kind of fly perfectly straight and you can go up by holding back and you can go down by holding forward steer left and right it's amazing and it only costs nine zone eight to make that sounds absolutely incredible it's the shit yeah for real so um who's doing the recap then who's getting us that extra xp this week 1d4 <laughs> jamie have you jamie. ever done a recap in your whole life I, i've done loads of recaps actually and in fact I definitely remember everything that happened last episode. That's um, good. Yeah, that's uh, good because I name don't... me one NPC from last episode. Oh come on, you can do that. Oh, you can do uh, that. There was giant spider <laughs> number two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's correct. That's... That actually gets you the XP. There was what? Giant spider number two. <laughs> um. Uh, remembers what, their NPCs. NPC, there's Plax. He's here. Uh, new NPCs. From last episode. Uh, Come there's on. There's a new one at the end. Oh, that there's was a new super one. Cool. Yeah. Oh, the super. The, you were wait, introduced the guy, to three NPCs last season session and told about a couple others. There were five there NPC names. There was Lady Behind the Glass. That's right. What right? she's called in my head. Um, then okay. there was Bandit. I ran over with a horse, which is what I call him in my head. Uh, Ogre Magi. Uh, that was the other one. Yeah, those are the three. I actually can't remember the names, but there's the... <laughs> we, we got there's to the Mitz. new town. We got the Farseer. No, I, I can remember Mitz, obviously. But he's, you're talking about, like, Julia Julia Farseer or something like ah, that. Ah, yes, town. very good. He also Thank said you. the Queen. Who, uh, and he's, she's a cringe seer. So we listen. I'm doing the recap. You failed. Okay. We <laughs> we fucking we get kicked out of we get kicked out of the uh, Bailwind. Neil, what was the name? Bail. So Bellwind. 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 We get kicked out of Bellwind, and we march. We reunite with Plax. We march up the river, and we get to the next town, which is Scalesvale. And as we get to the gate of Scalesvale, we meet somebody who knows our names and says that we're invited to come and meet with her, their patron this person julia farcia we go to julia farcia's house she's got a bit of a weird setup you know big nice house we go up there we get taken into a room and then i think a curtain opens and there's a big pane of glass that she sat behind and she's talking to us from behind this glass presumably for our own safety and she's explaining to us how the power structure and scales veil work so she thinks she says there's four powerful groups there's the people who live in the citadel essentially the government and the clergy i think there's her there's M miska the bandit queen is that right no that's a npc out of zelda shit magna the band 
Magna. Magna. You're losing it. You're losing them. Still pretty good. No. Pretty good. <laughs> That's pretty good. There's Magna the Bandit Queen, who we've killed a lot of her people when we rescued that village a couple of episodes past. So she's out for our head. This is what Julia Farcia tells us. And then there's also a slave trader turned mayor and like merchant who runs a lot of like gangs and power in the city of Scalesvale, but also has his own city um, sort of like outside of Scalesvale a day or two. And she kind of presents three options to us. We can take the path of peace, the path of rage, or the path of sloth, essentially. So peace is, I think, going up to the dwarves and hopefully trying to get passage through their tunnels all the way to where we need to go. There is the path of rage, which is essentially come to this city and... Um, loot it for everything that's got. Get magic items, gold, armor. That means killing an ogre magi, breaking into a city, basically being badasses. And there's some other third option which kind of sucked. So essentially, we decide to break into the city. We go there, we sneak into the valley, we run into a patrol, um, we sneak past them, but one sees us and we eventually end up capturing him. So we've got a, a prisoner who's one of the people from the city and we're basically outside the walls getting ready to enact our plan. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, sorry, I rambled a little bit because I was kind of remembering it as I was saying it, but mm -hmm. I got there, got there in the end. Yeah, that was almost entirely right. Uh, the only correction is that Cassius Silverbars was a slave who was fighting in the, the pits and bought That's his right. freedom and then is now just a, a powerful merchant in the area. Um, That's but right. other than that- ends the close in. Mm -hmm. Hey. Uh, I forgot to click the go live button, so if you missed all of that, then check out the YouTube video that'll be live tomorrow, <laughs> and you will literally get to see everything that you just missed. It was so funny and so cool. Thank you. Thanks. Welcome to the stream, I guess. Okay, okay well, you the missed the it. recap. Yeah, I get, well, you missed it. Was the, just the you, recap. You, it was just the recap. Listen, you've turned up late. You've missed the recap. Now you yeah. don't know what the fuck's going on. We're just getting started. <laughs> okay, let's go. Now you're just like our players. <laughs> Great. <clears throat> anyway. Uh, so, where are we? We're, we're at Scalesville, yeah? We're just outside? It's nighttime? Yeah, I think... No, no, no not Scalesville. We're in the canyons. Or Cork, I mean. Lead, the canyons leading up to Cork, yeah. Yeah. Great. We're maybe not here, Neil, where you've put us. Like, in no, 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 no. That's, that's just a, yeah. a you know, temporary token so I can have access to them pretty easily. Okay, um, I'm going to... this really nice map, by the way? No, I bought this really nice map. It's a really nice map. Anyway, sorry. It is nice. It is okay, really wait. Nice. I'm just going to get into character. Okay. Me, 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 All right. <laughs> wait, can you undo the hand movement? I need to talk to Nick for a second. Yeah, sure. Hang on. <laughs> yes? Uh, <clears throat> sorry, go back to being streamer. Okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, my knees. Fuck. Oh, okay. La, 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 la. <laughs> okay. So I think for chat and also the party there's kind of two options one is to try and sneak across the wall and one is to kind of um go down the edge of the cliff i think both plans have to result in killing the ogre magi under a silence aura uh in a surprise round we literally can't risk this guy getting the jump on us because he'll just go invisible and cast kind of cold on us at some point and wipe the party so our win condition is sneak into the city undetected and kill the ogre magi before we raise the alarm I agree. Uh, that is our only real option, is to take out the head of the snake. That's it. So I think we should have a discussion about whether we go over the wall or we go down the side of the cliff. I, I think that Cassian is going to push for... Going over the wall isn't going to work because spell casting is loud. They're going to hear us in the canyon. It's going to echo. I think our best bet is going to be go down the cliff with um, a rope, I should be able to tie you all up, lower you down, and then bring myself down. That sounds really scary. You're gonna hold all of us on a rope? I think maybe um, one at a time, Roy. What if, you, what if you slip and let go? What if I fall down? Well, hopefully uh, we well, can tie the ropes to something. know about it for about eight seconds, Roy. Eight seconds. All right. Um. Do you think you can... I don't think you can carry all of us, can you? 
It'll be one at a time. Okay. Yeah, that makes a bit more sense. Um, but the problem is, we end up, like, right now, our situation is, we're deep behind enemy lines, so to speak. And now we're going to, like, a Matryovka doll. What are, the, what are those things called? Now we're going to go behind enemy lines, behind enemy lines. So we're going to be, like, another level deep in here. Um, and if anything goes wrong, there's no getting out if we go down the cliff. That's true. But uh, if I remember correctly, Vasha, it was only a couple of weeks ago that you risked all of our lives trying to kill a Drakthar plane bane inside that inn. <clears throat> I like thumb towards Cassian. He, he hit her first. Perhaps. But the two of you went so righteous then. <clears throat> For oh, me, this is a righteous. good way. And so is this. These people are slavers, are they not? Yeah. They are. I agree. Like, I agree with the plan. I just... <laughs> he says... He kind of pauses and says, uh, this just isn't a very high chance we make it out. The thing is, Vasha, I've been thinking about this dwarf situation, which it might it does sound safe for you, but think about me, right? If I have to crawl through a dwarf-sized tunnel with my back fucking bent over for days, I'll never walk straight again. I mean, I'm barely sort of keeping it upright at the moment. If I have to do that for a week, I'm fucked. I'd rather just fucking get blasted by an ogre mage down here and go out with a bank. Surely the dwarves have sleds and we could get you dragged along the tunnel prone. Roy technology. looks down at his, like, waistline. Am I gonna <laughs> fit? The, d the dwarves are the most technologically advanced people <laughs> in the lands of... Where, what is this world again? Arcadia. Arcadia. No, no, the whole... Arcadia. Also Arcadia. Yeah, also Arcadia. <laughs> Wait, the planet's called Arcadia? The planet okay. and this continent. Yes. Yeah. Solar In system, Arcadia. also called Arcadia. <laughs> <laughs> My hometown? Arcadia. <laughs> the language? Well, Arcadian. Arcadian. I, I can't believe you forgot, actually. it's. Why did you do that, Neil? <laughs> oh, buddy. I like the name, and I couldn't decide whether it should be the name of the planet or the continent. And I'm like, well, screw it. The continent came first, and then just named it after the planet. And all these other continents can have different names. But I like this name, so we're just going to name a bunch of things this. So, like interesting fact, Neil's actually answered that question in the after show more extensively. So if you liked what you heard there, but you want to hear just a little bit more, you want him to expand on that. Because um, I'm not going to let him say anything else he wants to, but we got to charge money. I do. Kind of detail, I'm afraid. Well, I feel My like hands are tied only, by Nick. The only reason for a continent to have a more specific name than the planet it's on is if there's multiple continents, right? So if your mm -hmm. civilization like hasn't actually discovered any other continents, it would kind of just make sense that it's just... Arcadia, right? It's mm -hmm. just what it is. It's just what it is. Mm -hmm. And it was the first one, and then other ones came along, and they had to have a name to differentiate it from, like, the place, the, the original place. So, yeah. Okay, so let's get back to the reality here. Um, okay, how so long, plan. How long do we Hold have to this? How much rope do we need? Like, I know we've uh, got a lot. We have a metric fuckload of rope, so however yeah, long we have this a lot. is, we'll be fine. Okay. Um, something we want to do is, uh, where are we lowering down? Which sector? Right here. Right here, you, okay. How do I ping the map, Poivo? Just hold uh, left Hold click. down left click. Boop. Ding. Ding, ding, ding. ding. Um, okay, so if we're coming down here, then we probably want to spend some time, like, on the way down, studying to see if there's any patrols. Like, it should be, like, fairly basic stuff. People, like, the town looks fairly well lit. Is that correct, Koibu? Well, this is just a map that you've got, right? And someone has doodled on it that there's light, you know, in these areas you know, coming out of houses and along the canals. Um, but this is not an, uh, you know, perfect. I will say to the map maker though, it is very thorough. The fact that it he's is... listed every well, light on every building. No, 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 this is the map that you have. And then you asked your assistant, uh, your bot man, whose name is? Miss, mit, mift, mift. Mit, mit, mit. Mit. Um, mit. I'm going to call him Horseshoe. Oh. Hey, click uh, the like button on the stream while he yells at his dog. <laughs> um mitts drew you asked mitts where the lights were and so mitts kind of pointed out well this light's coming out of all the buildings and then you know along the canals are often lit mm. but this is actually um, the map that you're working with okay yes i imagine we're at the top of the cliff now we've made that journey absolutely not no you are in the canyons well before the cliffs i just okay, thought of, wait i just thought of a terrible consequence 
What do we do about the horse? Because if we escape via boat, how the fuck are we gonna get the horse back? We're escaping by boat? Well, we can't well I don't know. By, we can't escape by boat because Plax is still gonna be here. Now, what we could do is if we do have to escape by boat, we could set up a rendezvous point with Plax that we would meet at. Um, yeah. The horse is And that's what we have to do. Yeah, I think, I think Plax has to stay with the horse and meet us somewhere after this. Sorry, Basher. And your Basher camels really and your cart horse. and all your stuff. <laughs> yeah. He can do that, Connie. Sure. I mean, we are in bandit country. That's true. Shit, yeah. How about we just liberate the fucking town after we kill the Ogre Magi and let the... Yeah, and once we kill the Ogre Magi, we'll be good, won't we? I think it'll be good. Yeah, yeah. We okay, know where the weapons do... are. We know where the slaves are. Let's not think beyond killing the Ogre Magi. Let's kill the Ogre yeah. Magi and figure it out. Yeah. I, I would say if we manage to kill the Ogre Magi, uh, that would mean basically anyone who doesn't love being in this town would feel more likely to just leave and get the hell out of here. Yeah. If okay. he's the source of authority, it would be much easier for us to convince even slaves just to fight off a few guards, you know? I turn to... I, I break away from our huddle of four here, and I turn to Mitz and Plax, and I say, Mitz, we need to get up the side of that cliff. You know why? I mean, yeah, there are some paths that lead up to the cliffs, but I mean, no one goes up there because all those monsters up at the top of the cliffs. Yeah, well, those are the people on Heroes. What? Those I mean... people who are scared, they're not Heroes. Okay. What kind okay. of monsters? Oh, giant spiders. Yeah. They got uh, poison, they got spiky legs, and they got all these webs everywhere. Yeah. Kind of oh, bitch. like those ones we already killed, do you think, Vasha? Uh, yeah, that sounds familiar enough. Did you guys How already kill many... some spiders? That's pretty great. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do, the, do they... people sometimes go missing in the canyons here, I say, looking around? Well, only people dumb enough to walk by ones or twos, you know? That's why we travel in car. Well, we used to travel in caravans before, before I changed sides. We? Wait, back when I when I worked for the enemy, you know? The enemy, you know, right. Yeah. The, fu the, the funny thing is, you got captured because you came on your own. I see my point exactly. Yeah, I'm you gotta right. move well, in there's numbers. <laughs> there's loads of us. We've got camels. We've got a horse. There's like mm -hmm. six of us here. We'll be mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Um, oh, also, I don't know how the hell you're going to get those uh, camels and, and that wagon up those cliffs. It's not exactly like tread ground you know it takes climbing you're gonna have to leave the wagon behind and probably the horses and the camels all that shit's gonna have to be left behind you're gonna be like climbing hand over hand i don't even know how you're gonna take your shields up there but i'm sure you'll figure it out i look to plaques and then back at vasha uh maybe the front door is the best option there's a reason the cliffs aren't defended you know like there's not watchtowers up there for a reason also, pretty visible. Pretty easy to see someone coming down the cliffs. You know, if there's even um, a little bit of moonlight or starlight, you got any sort of metal on you. You know, you're just like suspended above the city for anyone to see. Yeah, but it's dark. People don't look up very much. Yeah, right? People don't look up. That is a weird phenomenon. That's true. If you want to hide something in the room, hide it above. Hide it level. above their eyesight. I'm. Listen here, Mitz. <laughs> I'm yes, a sir. hero. I'm a hero adventurer. Mm -hmm. No one looks up. When's the last time you looked up? Yeah, exactly. Now, <laughs> we're going down the cliffs. We're always thinking back to the time work. when, like, the giant spiders were attacking us, and they were like sitting on top of the rocks, and we were like all no looking one up at, at the, the spiders. <laughs> <laughs> they just those spiders disappeared, actually. <laughs> Yeah, the spiders are still out there. They'll have told our friends to leave us alone. Uh, we've actually gained a lot of reputation in the spider kind. Um, yeah. No. Uh, I feel as if these cliffs sound very dangerous and potentially mission ruining. Whereas going through the wall, surely there's got to be something we can do with this hill giant. Like, clearly, 
Hill giants aren't very civilized. They, they must lose control. There's something we could do to maybe send it into a rampage. The hill giant's on the inside of the wall, and I feel like if we go to the front and get the hill giant going, someone's going to get word to the ogre magi. And, then we're and that's going to be a problem, and then we're fucked. Because you see here, I pull out the piece of paper that the lady gave us. You see the spell? Cone of cold? That could even kill uh, an adventurer greater than all of us. It could kill us all at once. We have to get the drop on them. Hmm. Up the cliffs we go, then, really as far scary. as I'm concerned. Are you sure we can't just turn back? Sorry, I'm Roy. Not... We, could, we could go do the... just one minute. I mean, we, we do could. have the option of, we, of turning back. We could we do. go do what I wanted to do originally and do the dwarves. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, what was the th Does anyone remember the third option? The third uh, option was compromising with the guy whose town we're about to attack. That's right. We're not allowed to do that, so... Hmm. This, this battle feels a little bit out of our scope. Now... If I had had time to complete more of my paladin training and maybe I was slightly more powerful, I would have felt a bit more confident going in here. But the fact that we are unrested, undertrained and undersupplied makes this a very precarious proposition. I do think we could take out the Augur Magi if we got to him. It's the getting to him with enough wheat in the horse's belly to do the yeah. job that I'm worried about. I, I I register your concerns. I would say that if we can pull this off, we might our journey might be over. We won't be able to just leverage the result of this to get us to the temple as soon as we need to. I mean, if we've got a whole city under our command. Would it be under our command? I, I don't know if we, it would be. As we would have hopeless, a lot of, there's a lot of lo items and wealth and loot in here. Yeah, so, as, as I see it, this town is a threat, but whatever waits in that pyramid is likely to be deadlier than this. And if we go in unprepared, we'll be, we'll be facing just a certain doom as we are here. Vasher nods and says, yeah, we, we need the stuff that's in this town. Now, we do still have the option of utilizing our friend here and trying to find a compromise with the uh, slaver. There's a world <laughs> where we there's a, there's a world where we get into this town under the guise of helping him. You don't think so, Mitz? I mean, I, how would how does that work? I don't know. You tell me. I don't know, but you know, you get face to face with the dude, then you get all of his guards around him, and he's like on total alert and everything. I mean, you'd be, you'd be, you'd be able to get to face to face, but then it'd probably be the hardest battle possible. Mm -hmm. what I if think we... that we should go with the dwarves. <clears throat> what if we went? Lives. Are, are we talking about face to face with the ogre magi here? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. What if we go face to face? Uh for a meeting and just accepted their hospitality. What and hospitality? Then in the dead of night. Well. So like, we're here what, to get you're going to show up and, and say what? And then we'll probably just take Tell all your up. shit, you know? What if we say uh, we had a meeting with Julia Farsier, where enemies of. Fuck. Marry the Bandit Queen. Yeah, but like. And we want to. Do you have a message? You got like a writing from Julia or, or from Cassius to, to say any of no, this no. stuff? We're, like, we're saying that like, we'll say Julia's trying to recruit us to get us to fuck you up in this city. We're here to tell on her and help you fuck her up. Is that true? Could be. All I'm saying is that like... Ramshax is a, you know, a, a pretty brutal leader. And uh... If you're, if you're expecting some sort of like kind, patient, gentle soul who you could like pull a fast one over, um, like, you know, the, the reason that Gramshax is, is sort of the brutal ruler of this town is because they're kind of a brutal ruler. You know, I, I've yeah, seen he... Gramshax kill people for, you know, 
just stumbling over the words when trying to explain a mistake. So he's a wizard, you're... though. He's not stupid. Oh, yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. So, yeah, like, well, why not just, just regular couple... schmucks? Oh, I'm right? not... I mean, okay. I... Hey, look, you asked for my opinion, okay? And and now I'm getting <laughs> my opinion, and you're, like, coming down on me really hard, okay? If, if I can't feel odd, like I can honestly talk to you, I can't be very useful to you, all right? All I'm saying that's, is that Gramchex is kind Thank of a you. bitch, all right? And and mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of violent. And if you're going to come with, like, lies and deceit, like, you got to you gotta be... You got to do it good, okay? Because, like... Gramshex is always happy just to kill people and take their shit instead of dealing with whatever the problem is. Yeah. Okay, that's a good point. Um, I think oh, no, we should play to our strengths. What are our strengths here? Killing people, not necessarily talking. <clears throat> I thought that's you correct. guys were a bunch of heroes. I feel like we've been talking about this for ages. I thought you had a plan. You just captured me just... for no reason? <laughs> you what? talked us out of the plan. We have a we plan. We a plan. I don't know why they're not listening. We should just go down the mountain. It's that easy. Yeah, let's fucking it's, do it. It's simple, really. It's really okay. simple. <laughs> You're listening to a minion over here. Respectfully, I say. No offense. Oh, no oh, offense. None taken. You're listening yeah. to a minion, and you're taking his advice. Minions don't know anything half the time. That's true. Now, I, don't know, I, I, feel, I feel like this one speaks with the authority of something higher. Just getting a feeling. Have you? Did you pray a lot, Mitz? Of course, every day, three times a day. Who do you, what do you pray to? John? J God of corn? Oh yeah, John's <laughs> one of my favorites. <laughs> got some sweet corn. Got some spicy corn. I mean, I do like hey. corn. You know what? I think Mitz. I think. I think what, what's your What's your favorite type of corn, Mitz? Oh, it's definitely the sweet corn. You know, I the kernels are so corn. soft and delicious, oh, yeah. and and the cob on it really. You know, of all the cobs to use in the outhouse, the sweet corn cob is the best. Anyone else hungry? I'm getting kind of hungry. Do you guys want to? I could eat. I mean, I could eat. Oh. I look at our leader. Cassian? Pasha. Well, my, I mean, my instinct is to go through the front door, but no, absolutely no one else wants to do that. How, just we'll talk, we talk us front, th Yeah, if we go through the front door, how do we stop them from sounding the alarms to the Ogre Magi? Yeah, talk us through it, Vasha. What? The, we, we go up to the front gate and we attack. I look at the rest of the party. I look stunned. And then back at my leader. This is my leader? <laughs> <laughs> like, it works. I've never been really involved in the planning of many expeditions. I usually, I'm the doer. The then planner. listen to me, Vasher, as your advisor. I have been involved in the planning. Uh, he has been somewhat small. And I think that uh, my plan is the best. We go in off of the rock cliffs. It's absolutely suicidal, and that's why no one would expect it. And that also I'm... applies to my plan, actually. Yeah, but my plan won't alert the entire town. You see, see the difference? Why would why would the whole town be alerted? No one ever comes to the gates. Uh, I, I, would, would I would say though, Vasha, they do have guards and a giant defending the gate, so it would suggest that they are somewhat prepared for someone attacking. There's the probably gate. some sort of bell that would start ringing once I, the. I like, I turn to myths and I'm like, do they have bells? Are there bells in this town? Uh, they got whistles. They got whistles. Wait. They go Ooh, whistles. Oh, Fasher starts being childish. Ooh, whistles. Ooh, I'm so scared. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mitch, what's the way to the top of the mountain? I don't... <laughs> uh, I've never been. You know, they say there's a bunch of spiders up there, so... Um, and looks. I guess this is as good as any place to start making our way up there. Um, do I it know that spiders are afraid blocks. of fire? Or blocks. Um, well, spider natural creatures tend to be afraid of flames. Okay. Uh, it's just a, a broad generality there. So, yeah, natural giant spiders be... maybe afraid of flames. Do we want to be lighting our way up the mount, like with with like super obvious fire? I mean, it's that or fight. Well, just don't do it at night. I feel like yeah, we go, we go, go during wrong. the day. Yeah, just yeah. go during the day. Good point. And then we wait until nighttime when all the spiders wake up and come get us with their superior yeah, no. night vision. And that's when we jump. We're jumping. Right? 
No, you I'm saying have, like we we climb the mountain during the day. Spell? Be really and good then one Cassian to have. stands on his own. Fall? We do have feather fall. Hello, uh, sorry, I, I'm not finished denigrating Wait. your plan. Um, and then Cassian <laughs> stands alone at the top of the tower, <laughs> at the top of the cliff, lowering us one by one as hordes of spiders swarm all over this cliff on his own. That's hordes of spiders, really? Hordes of spiders. <laughs> Look at them. And I start pointing at the cliffs. They're out there. Wait, what? Yeah, uh, Roy, what spell did he just say? Feather fall. What does that one do? Um, Roy will explain. So, the, I, I can, um, uh, b basically, it's like, uh, for, for like a minute, um, it, it's uh, everyone who's falling they they like they they go like really really slowly like in that one story remember the story that i told you with the the uh -huh. kingdom of the mountain and the, the people and they like slowly like fall down and as they as they come in you remember that yeah and the, the we so we can just like is we we don't need we don't even have to we it's it's all good do you think that one could help us in the plan well i don't have it prepared so probably not oh, okay <laughs> Basher hangs his head in yeah. like, can we, can we just, can we... look, look, everything we've ever done, we've done attacked it head on. We killed, we went straight for Draktar, Draktar died. We went for those, what are, I'll turn to Roy, like, what are those like lizard things called again? The little skittery ones? Um, wait, Roy knows this, uh, Shack Shack something? Is it, no, that's a bird like place. Bow um, called or something like that? <laughs> They're, wait. Come on, Roy. Kinkies. Oh, you're a fanboy. No, 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 no. They're um. Roy is like very upset that he can't think of it. That is right. upset. What is is this like a, a history check? <laughs> <laughs> For you. <laughs> the Azari. The Azari, that's, that's right. Yes, Azari, that's them. Yeah, every every time we ran into the Azari, we took them head on. We ran into the Hydra, we ran away, straight away. We didn't go off in weird directions. Everything we've done, we've gone straight to the problem. I mean, well, Basha, what do we do? To. Just knock on the and door? Also, we almost died every time. Basha, yeah. we, can't, we can't take the Ogre Magi today if we don't get the surprise on them. If we just what? attack, the, how do you even attack the gate? Do you have a catapult that you've not told me about? What? Why would we, why would the gate be closed? We just go in because it's nighttime. Oh, okay. He's saying during the day we just walk in during the day. Yeah, Mitsk. Can heroes. you get us into the city? I mean, yeah, but they're gonna ask what you're bringing and who you're bringing it for, and like, what warehouse oh, is it going to? They're gonna want some like paperwork, you know? It's it's. Uh, Cassius you owns the place, with... so... Could you come up with an excuse? Surely we could say, like, our caravan was raided, or... Oh, we man. Well, if that's what happens, then, you know, Grimshax is going to want to see you real fast. I've got to have some kind of Wait, excuse. that's not bad. If Grimshax wants to see us... Yeah, I mean, if your you caravan gets raided and all your shit gets taken and you don't have any of your stuff, but you still survive, Grimshax is going to want to see you and probably, like... You know, kill a couple of you, decimate the unit to, you know, as a showing. Wait, what if... that's good. Because we'll see them. You cast Silence, uh -huh. and we attack Grimshacks. And uh, does Grimshacks usually... Grimshacks, I'm sure, he's powerful enough that he'll hold these kind of audiences alone. Right? <laughs> but I, I don't think we'd <laughs> no. have our weapons, though, right? Yeah, we'd need our weapons. We wouldn't have weapons. Uh, no, like Grimshacks will come to the gate. And you'll have to like stand there, and you know the hill giant will need be nearby, and whatever minions and whatever archers on duty, you know there'll there'll be others about. Yeah. Okay, is there a kind of, yeah, what kind of other a, excuses? What? Like, yeah. Oh. What about what about Mitz? Your caravan gets attacked by giant spiders, or you get separated, and we save your life, but we're wounded, and we need a place to rest, and we can't get back through the canyon. Is there any world where Cork puts us up? For a few days, so we can rest as people that saved your life. Scratches his head. Um, I like this idea. This sounds good. I mean, I guess I don't. I don't know. 
That's, that's never happened before that I've heard of. People usually allowed their weapons in the city? Guests? Well, there's not really much in the way of guests. It's a, it's a trading post that Cassius owns, and it's just Cassius's supply wagons that come to and from. There's not, there's not really much if, in the way of guests. Well, if I'm a merchant... Oh, there's no independent no, merchants coming here? Right, right. It's, it's, it's the way that Cassius mm. trades between Bellwind and uh, the Green River. We would need a very good story. And Mitz would need to roll the, the check. Mitz, lie to me. Uh, you're very oh, handsome. Like your Do I believe him? Give me that persuasion check. Yeah, make him roll a persuasion check now. I am. Yeah, let me let's just see how good Mitz is here. Uh, huzzah! It's an 11. Uh, you're very handsome. I look, at, I look at Mitz and say, thank you. <laughs> Damn right. Oh, God. He's okay. A There's a couple of options, right? One, we try and use a story to get our way inside. Two, we climb up the cliff and fight the spiders and then lapel down. Okay, three, here's a third option. We back out of this canyon and we try and take a long rest in and scales veil and try and just keep under the radar of the bandit queen and come back here with all of our gear and with feather fall spell and then perhaps the we could option? perhaps we could capture a caravan on the way to the city and pretend to be that caravan mm. how about the fourth option we go with the dwarves we don't waste all this time but we just get that started cassie think die, about the wealth if, of items that are in here but think about if we die here, how our whole mission will be for naught. And there is a good chance that we will die. We die here, we die in the pyramid. Or, you know, it's ultimately, if we get yeah. to the pyramid without the items that are here, I feel we won't be able to do much. If we just walk through a bunch of dwarf tunnels for seven days and then turn up a heat trick. Who's to say the dwarves won't help us? We don't know their society. I'm factoring in that they will help us, and I still can't, don't want to do it. You're just racist. It's Dwarves. not racist. Mate, the tunnels will be five foot tall. You're like six and a half foot. You're going to be fucked. He can crouch. I uh, For days? I'm really worried that I'm going to get stuck, guys. Don't worry, Roy. Dwarves are as wide as you. Uh, Basher, okay. you're the leader. Make a decision. All right, we're doing a wisdom check. Let me. <clears throat> that implies that you, the player, know the best option. <laughs> yeah, I <did. laughs> just clearly don't. All right, how do I? How do I actually do a wisdom check? You just click on your the, wisdom like the text. Wisdom. Mate, the the long rest and scales fail is legitimately the best option. No, I don't think so. I, I think but we'll get caught by the bandits. We're being hunted. We'll get fucked. Let's imagine it's a whole city. They're not just going to kill us in the street. Wait, we'll be all right. They get one check per day to catch us, okay? And it's a DC 15. That is like a 90% chance they find us. How are they going to find us? If we just hold ourselves up in an inn, how are they going to find us? Just don't leave the room for a week. Get a long well, rest. We fuck off. We arrived at the gate and some... Well, I guess that was he was in working for the... The bandits are literally at the front gate, like watching people enter. Yeah, and they didn't attack us when we first entered. So do they know who we are? How do we know? Why wouldn't they have attacked us already? Attack us? I don't, it, we were only there a day. There's a difference between being there a day and being there seven days. We would have to basically live, we would have to basically get to an inn, get into that inn and not leave it for seven days. But that's not going to work because we need food. We're going to pay it's the inn. It's an inn. Listen, what, what, what's Wait, your decision? You got to hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. One more argument in, in, in favor of this. Let's say they do find us and we end up fighting Magda, Queen of Bandits, inside the city. That's probably a more favorable fight than the odds going into this. If we can kill her, then we can loot her shit, and then we can use those items to get into the temple. Okay. It's, you want to kill Mag are... Magma, Queen of Bandits? Holy shit! <laughs> it's yeah, how yeah, win. Should, okay, yeah, but you, you what be. you're not thinking about is, we have the element of surprise here, they'll have the element of surprise on us, and it's going to be probably an equally strong fight, so it's just a negative for us, because they're going to surprise us. Okay, I've made my I've made I've I've made my peace with you guys decide. Go ahead, Vasher. 
Uh, Vashter will sit and contemplate for a moment. He's kind of... He's thinking. Yes. And we might level up. No, there's a lot at stake here. This could be the end of the whole mission, or it could be the the thing that gets the whole campaign really going. This could be wealth and armor and magic items. This could be a chance to exercise your rage against this brutal and hostile society that does so many things that you you hate. And this could be a way just to you know, get it all off your chest. And then maybe you could look the other way on some other dark deeds until you can bring back uh, good King Arnold and come on a crusade and cleanse this land of all its evils. But are you the sort so, of person who walks in through the front door? Or are you the sort of person who sneaks in through the back? Vasher is a front door guy. But he is sitting and he's thinking. What he's really thinking about, like, is this an even viable pathway to bringing back King Arnold. Is this the step we can take? Like, mm. Is um, someone helping you or is someone using you? That is a question that had not run through his mind, but after whatever God just put that into his head, <laughs> <laughs> he's now considering that possibility. Um, Really, what he's thinking is he has a weight of responsibility that he hasn't been taking in the sense that he's supposed to be the leader. He's supposed to be the person who's come up with the plan. And when he came up with a plan, everyone kind of looked at him dumbfounded. And he realized that his plan making is inadequate, which means that his crew, his people don't have faith in him as a leader yet. And so he needs to gain and earn their trust in a way that he hasn't yet. And going through an incredibly risky mission where not everyone is on board is not the way to do that. And so he is going to kind of get up from his contemplation and say, it's not the way we should do it, but we'll go to the dwarves. I have. Uh, I look back at Mitz and shrug. Come on, Mitz. <laughs> You're gonna come meet some dwarves. All right. Um. Bring out that the map of of the Darkady again. We can look I'll at pull it. Hold up. We already got All a right. guide, Mitz. Well, I'm just saying that if if we're over here in Cork, yeah, right there. Uh huh. Um, the way to the Rithrahim, where the dwarves live. Passes through Scalesvale, and my caravan, the caravan that I used to work for before I changed sides, which I'm 100% legit with, with you guys the whole way, uh, they, they've won't gone to Scalesvale by now, and they've probably reported what's going on, so. So we have a lot of food, what if we just went like this? We have to get to Cork to do that. Oh, are we not at Cork right now? Where no, are we? you were, we're still in the canyon between the two. Oh, well, then we're, we just we're, we're actually pretty up. much right where you encountered me the day that you woke up. Yeah, yeah Fine, I look around doesn't... and I'm like, oh, we have, yeah, we actually haven't ever moved. Yeah, we haven't moved at all. Um, and it's it's just it. a, a big canyon. The tall walls are pretty tall. The they're, they're only way really between the two is through <clears> from Cork to Scalesvale but if, with a wagon. Without a wagon, you know, you could probably climb these cliffs or something, but with the cart, he points the cart, finger at the cart, and the camels and the horse... Cork and Scales Veil. You know, it's a it's a one way or the other. What if we come out and we go into the Dust Bowl? Fuck his I caravan. Mean, Who cares? What are they going to do? You'd have to go to Scales yeah. Veil and then up north and then to the Dust Bowl. Like, All right, the, I really don't the, care about the caravan. We will. Yeah, we what, can, we've not done anything yeah. wrong. We're fine. Let's go. Come cool. on. Well, let's uh, go Scales Veil. The boys is a problem to them, but all right. Fuck Everyone that. turns around and begins to head towards Scales Vale. Got enough food? Yeah, we have we have enough food. We can, yeah, we, we're good. You were so you sure? cool. Yeah, yes, this morning earlier. What happened? We've got a we've got giant spider Russians for you, actually, Mitz. Here, I'm gonna roll a D20 quick. Mm -hmm. Can I roll for the uh how well the journey goes? 
Uh, yes, I am ready for that roll now. Good. Good. <laughs> That's good though. Oh, it, it's, not, good. it's not always. It's not always one and two is good. Okay, I think there's various numbers. Okay. Wait, I don't see your number. Oh. That's well, terrible. why don't we take a break right here, and when we come back on the other side, we'll see what happens. See you soon. So we're walking through the desert or the the canyon system, which is pretty dry over here. And yes. uh, what's the conversation like? And what's the marching order like in this uh, you know, barren wasteland of the canyon? Me. Not the guy on the horse? No. I'm Beacon's hanging out, out with on my shoulder, by the way. Yep. I'm hanging out with plaques of mitts at the back. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm like in the middle. Okay. Uh, cool. Well, <clears throat> Mr. Mooten, you're in the front. That's right. Give me the greatest perception check of your life. Easy. There you go, 12. Easy, Tom. Pretty good. It's pretty good. I want to say that I do learn from my previous spider bullshit, and I'm looking up a little bit. Every once in a while, I'm checking up the top of the canyons. <clears throat> I've got 14 passive perception as well, so I'm always aware. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wise, you might say. Yeah. Well... Um, it is as you're looking up, because you got to look up in case there's a spider, that you come round a corner and the two groups come face to face with one another, sort of by surprise. Um, and I don't think anybody quite recognizes that we are in some sort of, you know, no one realizes that they're about to run into someone as they come around a corner. And yet Cassian comes to a stop. And I think that stops the party line as these people come to a stop and it stops their party line. And there's a bit of is that like a half heartbeat of silence um, before this person points a finger in your direction and goes, that must be them. I Roy looks behind himself. Uh -uh. <clears throat> you uh... there. He points as, uh, this is a dwarf, and he points his huge I hammer start, in your direction. I start walking up. Mm -hmm. I start walking forward to the front of the line. Lay down your weapons. Actually, it's a great axe. Lay down your weapons right now. I want to say, uh, who are you? And no. I you am Cassius Silver Bars. These are my lands. Oh, shit. I want to say we mean no harm in Dwarvish. I mean, we were... Is there any reaction to him of his to me speaking dwarvish? Give me a charisma check. Just click on the charisma text on your character sheet. Yes, yes, yes. One second. <sighs> well, it's a charisma save instead of a charisma check, but it's close you enough for our purposes. Yeah. Uh, he will reply in Dwarven, lay down your arms or die like dogs. I will translate this to the party. I look at, I look over my shoulders of Vasha to gauge his reaction here. Like, is it, uh, I give you a look that says, is it fucking go time? Vasha is standing his ground. He is not making immediate moves to action. Well, uh, get him! You he sure? cries. Okay, he, I, he, I he, cast he the spell. Fuck. No, we're, we're all rolling initiative. Fuck! Fuck! Damn it! Fuck! Well, it was a good game. Shouldn't have hesitated. Fuck off, man! Fine, we this said is it not over. And anyways, yeah, we're gonna fuck these guys up. Uh ah, uh, bullshit! I didn't click my token, but I'll read it. Fuck! Vash is thinking really quickly in the two seconds before combat about whether or not he should drop his weapon. <laughs> no, fuck it. He's not dropping his weapon to his labor. He's in. He hesitated for a moment because he wasn't unsure about keeping the party alive. Mm hmm. Uh, we're going to. Let's fucking go. Give oh God, you... I'm moving so late. I'm fucked. You're at the back. You'll be all right. I should have been way at the back. 
Hey, Mitz's health bar has changed color, and I'm not cool with that. Uh, yes, I will change him to an ally. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, I don't think Mitz is going to help us in this one, boys. <laughs> His hero's here. Yeah, that's right. There we go. Okay. They only have 20. Hey, we got them. We're fine. Uh, the very first person up is one of these minions um, who will just take a step to the side and 55 feet is going to take a shot at Cassian. 18 will hit. Uh, Am I and... technically within oh, five nope. feet of him with my horse? No. You are just too far, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, minimum damage, right. though. Two damage, Thank yeah. You. Come on, Mitz. Mitz will uh, move and dash here. Shit. Cassius. Oh, cool. We don't know what he's doing yet. Cassius Silver Bars. Dwarf Omegalol. Um, <laughs> yes, Wait, he's a dwarf. Like how, much move, how much movement does he have now? He's got I 20 take five movement. Back. <laughs> dwarf. He's <laughs> walking away from him. <laughs> That's why my initiative is so low. Because I'm just fucking laughing as he starts running towards us. <laughs> Hey, um, I actually, I want to throw a charisma check up real quick. I chuckle at him as he runs towards me. 15. Fucking based. A hearty laugh. <laughs> He's humiliated. <laughs> Comes the dwarf as he strides forward. Uh, I will, the I'll also the say, uh, this is an arena, boy. You can't catch me in an open field. <laughs> the next archer will take a shot at you as you mock their leader. Uh, 13. Oh. Are you wait, all wearing do I need armor? A, do I need a roll? Oh, wait. Yeah. One, yeah. Only one of us I'm either at 11 armor. or 13, so we should roll for that. Yeah. Um, we rolled yeah. last time. I think it was Vasha. Yeah, but you change every few hours, right? Because it's 1D3? hot. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait a minute. No, but you're okay. out of the you're out of the desert in the canyon. It's still roll. You only have the one set of armor anyway, so. I just has it. Come on, Nick, please. I need it. I need it. Oh, <laughs> we can also. Armor. Oh. Okay, roll off, roll off, roll off. Roll off? Okay. Oh, nice. Let's go. <laughs> All right. You are wearing your armor, um, but a 13 still hits you, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you'll take six points of damage. Fuck. And the first minion will uh, close over here against Mitz and go, you traitor, and club him with a 17 to hit, hitting Mitz for four. Mitz, no. Uh, the next bandit is just going to take another shot at Cassius, or not Cassius, uh, uh, Cassian, and ping you for another five. <laughs> and These the fuckers, man. First of the bodyguards will move 30 to you and is going to shove you. DC 20 acrobatics or athletics check to stay standing. Ah, oh, you are knocked down. Is your acrobatics really higher than your athletics? Oh, uh, can I, sorry, I clicked the wrong one. Can I have oh, my, my you acrobatics? You can keep your 16. Yeah, yeah I thought you were okay. gonna roll an athletics. I have a plus five, thank you. Oh, okay. nice. I passed, right, thank so you. So you pass by one. Oof. Okay, uh, then they will, as the multi attack says, make a second shove. Aha, uh -huh, a 22. Fucking up. Yes, oh, there we go. you are knocked prone. Where's my prone token? Huzzah. Okay, next bodyguard um, is going to come over here to the old man, but that takes all of her movement and Roy Waystar. Okay, remind me again, does Vika move before or after me? Right before you, like this is Vika's turn. Okay, Um, Vika will stay on my shoulder for now. Mm-hmm. Um, I will move to cover. Um, I can make this, yeah. With Vika. Mm hmm. Well, yes. Yeah, no, this is correct. Okay. Um, and then as a bonus action, I will cast a Dragon's Breath on Vika. Okay. Which allows it to spit fire. And um, I believe since Vika goes before me, that is my turn. Yep. 
Um, that is a move. Dragon's Breath is a bonus action, right? Oh, wait, yeah. I can still cast a Fire Bolt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Upon and who? I should probably... I should have a clean shot at this guy. No? Yeah, definitely. Let's fucking go. A easy shot. For nine damage. Let's go. Almost killing, but not quite. Excellent. Uh, whoops, I skipped a bandit minion. Uh, this one right Did here. Mitz not ready in attack, Boo. Mitz had to dash to get there, unfortunately. Okay. Um, bandit will sh come over here and take another shot at Cassian. This is a miss. miss. Whoosh. And the next bodyguard will come. Actually, that would have been a terrible idea since you're prone. They would have had disadvantage, but it's too late. The dice have rolled. This one will come on over. You're prone. She has advantage on attacks against prone people and will quarter staff you oh, with an Missed. eight and quarter nice. staff you with a 19 uh, for five. And the first minion goes here, and the second minion goes here. Um, and they both have ready attacks. By action and surge, do I get Asher. a bonus action again? No, you just get the action. Yeah. Um, so Vasher is watching the eruption of violence, and he is considering his options in terms of where he could go and who he could attack and what he could do. Um, mm -hmm. He really would like to get over to maybe some of these archers. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think he's going to kind of come this. I want to get to here, basically, this area, if I can. Mm. I'm trying mm -hmm. to see if there's a way I can get around without take. Well, if I skirt around this person, I won't take an attack of opportunity, would I? Because yeah, I'd still be know. in their zone. Correct. Yeah, you could get there. Um, and you would yeah. essentially come here, here, here. Yeah, perfect. Um, we're gonna so I'm a, take your horse off of this weird angle it's on that's kind of screwing with our positioning. Yes. You just gonna like reattach me to it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Horse. There we go. <laughs> I'm gonna add a horse to every DC campaign now. Just to make Neil's life harder. <laughs> it's, it's so much harder with the horse. All right, you come round this bodyguard, never leaving her a threatening square, never provoking attack of opportunity. Um, so it just takes movement for him to stand back up, right? Yes, half of his movement. Right. I am going to bonus action cast divine favor. To do this is uh concentration up to one minute your prayer empowers you with divine favor until the spell ends your weapon attacks deal an extra 1d4 radiant damage um, so okay. i am on a horse and they are not so i do have advantage on this attack and i will be attacking this um well, on the top right what yes okay. bring um, your weapon to bear it will be a longsword attack. Oh, I'll roll it twice. 16. Hits. For 1d this and plus. Plus the d4. Ooh, minimum damage plus. Oh, absolute yeah. minimum. Uh, you That's devastating. wildly inconvenience the bodyguard before you. And Cassian, knocked down, shot full of arrows, gets to his feet. Stand up. I'm going to use a bonus action for my fighting spirit. That's going to give me advantage this entire turn. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to great weapon master attack. Mm -hmm. So I'm taking my, you know, the things. Mm -hmm. Here you go. Ooh. Eight is a miss. Okay. Um, going to action surge. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm going to do it again. Here you go. Natural nice. 20. It's going to be 19 plus 9 damage. 28. 28 damage is 1 HP more than she has. Okay, good. And she That's drops. That's going to give me the another ground. attack. Yes. Um, I get another attack because of my Great Weapon Master. But it, it, you a, can take nope, it as a bonus, bonus action. action? Yes. Yeah, oh, so which you that. had to use for your okay, fighting we'll spirit. Get my five temporary hit points. Bye. And um, you have 15 feet of movement if you'd like it. If you stay adjacent to me, I can use interception tactics on you. That's true, yeah. Okay. Um, so I did one attack. I've done two attacks. 
Done my action surge. I think that's it for me, folks. Okay. Yep. That's my that's my turn. Uh, the next bodyguard is gonna come on over, and she's gonna pop in right here. She is flanking Vasher across the horse, and will just attack you. Oh, she also has pack tactics. Um, cool. So she's got advantage on this attack against you, Vasher. So 17. 17 hits. Hit for three, and she gets two attacks. Second one is a 19. For seven, you'll take a total of 10. Um, and the last little minion will scurry to, I guess, just to here. And he doesn't have flanking. Um, he would have to be flanking with the steer mirror to do it. So instead he just comes on over and takes his little club and tries to club you on the booty with a 10, which is a miss. Steer mirror. Yes. Uh, uh, do I con save for concentration? What do I roll? Yes, you do. Uh, con, just a constitution saving throw. DC 10. Boom. And you save. need two because you got hit twice. Ooh. All right, my spell ends. Oh, uh, come on. Steer okay. a big one here, Nick. <laughs> yeah, I think if I cast Shatter at this specific point between between these two guys, it's 10 feet radius, I think I can hit everyone or maybe just everyone but one. I can't see the point that you're you're trying to... Like, like here. Oh, 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 way up here. Sorry. Um... Yeah, yeah. Oh, you want to cast it in between squares. You don't want to cast I mean, it on a square. The, they're all within two squares. If I cast it on this guy, then I can definitely, without any range fuckery, get all of the archers and this guy in the bottom right. Yes. But I'd argue that by positioning guy, I can probably get all of them. But if you want to nickel and dime me over this other guy, I'll, I'll concede. You know, that's what he lives for, Nick. I know, it is I know, what I, I live for. Yes, that yes. Let's just... Is. let's. Target it in a square instead of in the space between squares. Because okay. we're going to do the space between squares. Now we got to do a bunch of math if we want to. Okay. Otherwise, so on the... yeah, yeah. Okay, listen. I know I know what I'm going to fuck with. needs a preamble. Off, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me put you in the mood, baby, okay? Let me talk dirty to you. So I target this guy. I get all four archers and then uh -huh. this, this bottom right guy here. Yeah. Excellent. Okay? So I cast Shatter. I use my uh, channel divinity to do max damage. So I do 24 damage to all of them. They and get they for, get a uh, save for half. Yes. Um, it's a con save or a deck save? Um, con save, DC 14. Okay, they all have plus one on their cons, so they need a 13 or higher. Uh, there are five of them, so five D20s. Greater than or equal to 13, only one of them passes. So, uh, you know, one, two, this guy will take half of, what was it, 28? Yeah. Uh, no, 24, 24. 24, so half of that is, 12. oh, they all die anyway. They only have 11 HP max, doesn't even matter. Uh, yeah. Um, all of them are down. The tastiest shatter I've ever seen. Yeah, mom. And that will get rid of all of the archers. See how he saw you see how he nickel to dime you there? Yeah. <laughs> he wouldn't let you have it. <laughs> it's alright, it's good job I saved my spell slot, so. Oh, uh, was that spot within range? Yes, 60 feet. Okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah, you're good. You're good. Yeah. He even tried to Just barely. Yeah. <laughs> Just... <laughs> <laughs> That's it gotta make you earn it, okay? Yeah, yes. that's fine. All right, Sirmir, what about 20 fighter randomly? Well the Sirmir, do you have any uh is this, yeah, do you have any movement? Any mm. bonus actions? Uh, bonus actions? What are they? No, Excellent. I think so. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Mitz is wounded, just a smidge. Oh, he Mitz. needs some. He needs a morale check. No, he's just a minion. No, he's just no a minion. Way. Your he enemies make morale checks. Witness. Okay, wait. This but he's just. He's the just the most fair thing. There's just been a huge on. explosion. It's fine. Yeah. And a loud noise. Yeah. You're right. Ring. Beyond, in all he gets directions. hit, and then there's a loud boom. Maybe he's afraid. Maybe he's empowered. Okay, but I'm just, I would just like oh, to... Yeah. He he passes. Passes. He's, he's in, in it. the scene Fine. of the battlefield here. Everyone is now covered in the viscera of these people that have been torn apart <laughs> from the insides. Like, <laughs> the backs of all of these guys, they look over their shoulder, they see their entire back line eviscerated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a, absolutely what's there. going on here. Um, and Mitz is a pro. 
Mitz, Mitz is a, a proper minion. So he's going to do what a proper minion does. And uh, that's just fight the person directly in front of him without any regard for grand tactics or strategy. Uh, and he will club the person before him and miss. Cassius. <laughs> Cassius will go. Uh, thud. Thud. Whoops. Thud. 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 Thud, he takes all of his movement to come around the line, and he looks up at the paladin. You there! You must be the one in charge. I'm I gonna bring you down Cassius. to my level. Um, and he'll make three <laughs> melee attacks against you with his Jesus. great axe. Oh, shit. Against him, of course. 15 against you. That's Can idiot. you really hit him? Yeah, he's got a great axe. Oh, okay. It sh I should have high damage. <laughs> Second attack. Whoop. 13. Jesus Christ. For 25 damage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jesus fuck. You fall off the horse. What the fuck? <laughs> um, and then he'll take his third attack. Wait. Now, the horse is valuable. He wants to keep the horse. Um, so let's take his third attack against your body on the ground. Um, oh, fucking burrito. Which will Jesus. hit you uh, 21. It won't kill you, but you will fail a death saving throw. Do you fail two? Uh, yes, you take I two death so. saves. Because it's an it's automatic crit, crit right? Yeah. yeah. Jesus. Guys, consider surrendering. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. If attack successful, it's an automatic crit. I guess we should technically roll another 2d12 in there to see if it does bring you to negative 43. So 2d12, 22, oh, 43, oh my exactly. Oh my god, what? He brings his axe no. up and cuts Vasher's head off. Wait, what? Do I have to, wait, wait, do I have to be one more than my HP? Or exactly my HP. Look it, it up. Matters. Someone look it up because that's exactly on the spot. So, I sort of feel like maybe a precedent's been set there. I think Roy was brought to exactly his yeah. and did not die. And you want to say that that is a precedent and not a mistake? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> just uh, him clutching at straws. I think he's just had his head cut off. I think he's just had his head cut off, right? He just had his head cut off. If you take any damage while you're at zero hit points, you suffer a death saving throw. If it's critical, you suffer two failures. If it equals or exceeds your maximum hit points, you suffer instant death. Um, he hacks off Vasher's head. Jesus. Uh, the next fuck melee me. minion will <laughs> club Mitz for 14, for five, bringing Mitz to two. Uh, the next bodyguard will... Uh, we'll just a quarter staff on. We don't have act tactics. That's fine. Uh, we'll just quarter staff the the fighter. Miss. Uh, miss and a hit for nine. The next bodyguard will quarter staff the old man. Fifteen. Hits for six. Ten is a miss. Vika. I'm trying to find an angle. Quite hard. I think my I think we're fuck I think we're dead. This guy's like level ten or something. Yeah. Can Vika move? Vika's got thirty the movement. Square without provoking anything. Uh, Vika can get to That's here. 35. This is thirty right here. This is thirty. Yeah. Shit. And. Yeah, 15 foot cone will not hit over there. Okay. Wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. I don't think Vash. Did Vash should take 43 damage in one hit? Well, it was. No, I had taken one, I had taken a small chunk of damage. No, no, I took. Like, I don't think it works like that. I think he has to take all the damage in one hit. Now. It was one hit, right? 21 plus 22 is 43. Yeah, but it was a critical hit from the. It's critical, it's but, why does it do, but why does it do 4d12? Because his base damage is 2d... Oh, wait a minute. His base damage is 2d12, but... Hold on. 
Brute. A melee weapon deals one extra damage of die when Cassius hits with it, included in the attack. Does Brute count towards critical? No. And I don't think it would. I think you'd only get one extra d12, right? Surely. Oh. That is a fucking mad feat, by the way. How do you get That's that? That's insane. Does I think it does, right? Why wouldn't it? When you critical, you just roll all your dice again. Root hmm. melee weapon deals one extra die when you hit. And when you crit, you just roll all your dice. You, you just double the dice rolls. I think brute does work here. Oh, Any dice damage delivered by a critical. Yeah. When you crit, you double all of the attacks damage dice. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, fair enough. Nice try, though. Very close. Right. Um, okay. okay, so Vika has um, moved to here. I, I think. Well, and so what is like the angle of like a, of of a cone like this? Would I be um, able to hit those two mm -hmm. and then also hit this guy? It, it, the cone is maybe cone. It's well defined somewhere. Like we basically just have to know what is the angle at which it comes out, right? I think it's a ninety degree cone, right? And so it'll come out at fifteen degrees, feet in each direction. Then we should be able to do it. Yeah, I think you'll hit both of these and this guy. Okay, it's three six. Okay. Oh well, no, no, it would be. Because. Hold on. Because Vika would just be able, basically, if Vika is looking forty-five degrees this way, right? Mm -hmm. It goes forty-five degrees this way, and then goes forty-five degrees this way. Yeah. No, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're yeah, I think 3D6. it does something like this. All right. This minion will deserve saves. deck save. This one will fail and take the full damage, which is... Uh, well, it doesn't matter. He's dead. And these other two on the sides will make deck saves. Save, save. 4 and 14. That's one pass, one fail. Uh... 10 here and 5 here. And Roy Waystar will take a turn. Um, you see Basher walk. decapitated upon the ground. His head clean from his body. Bash, um, Roy will pull himself together, trying not to freak out. He will move down here, get a clean shot at the dwarf. And um, cast magic missile. Uh, and add me another two d four plus two. Are you casting at level one or level two? Um, level two. To add three d so four plus extra. three. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, Let's see how much his HP mar moves here. It's not going to be a lot. Uh, okay. So 17. 17. That's a chunk. Yeah, not enough though. Not enough. This is a dead bodyguard. Uh, this minion passes his save and will move here and club Vika. Uh, nine is a miss. Basher to last. Really, really important. Buddy, we're just going to... Um, it's time for me to argue that I might actually be able to leave. Oh. <laughs> um... Is it actually an automatic crit when someone is knocked out? Is it an auto crit or do you have advantage on the attack? Or is it like... Um, let me open up my player's handbook. Let's see. Unconscious. 
Oh, yeah. If it's unconscious, then any attack that hits the creature is a critical hit if the attacker's within five feet. I think I'm fucking dead. I think you're fucking dead. However, I'm going to roll a death saving throw anyway, just for just for the memes. Just to see if your head comes back onto the shoulders. Ugh. That's a nine. All right. Uh, the horse enrages. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> it's We're acting gonna... independently. <laughs> yes, that will absolutely happen. But before we get there, okay, before we get there, Basher, your character is, is absolutely dead, but you're going to wake up or you're going to come to consciousness. Um, you are in the water, um, like kind of washing up on a beach at nighttime. There's some like palm trees nearby. There's some stars out. It's a soft, sandy beach with a little bit of grasses. There's a small hut before you. I make my way to the hut. Yeah, you get up, you start making your way over there. Um, you've got your armor. Well, actually, you're not wearing armor, but you've got your shield and your sword still in your hand. Your, your horse isn't anywhere to be seen. Um, hut has a straw roof. It's pretty small. It's maybe like eight feet wide and 10 feet deep. It doesn't have any walls. You can see there's like a bar and a whole bunch of stools sitting there. Um, there's a couple people sitting at the bar. Some of them have weapons. Some of them have like clearly dropped their weapons as they've walked to the bar. What do you do with yours? Uh, I guess if that seems to be the way things people are doing, I will leave my weapons. Just drop them on the ground or sheathe them and fold them nicely. What's the... Uh, I suppose Vasher would... Is there like a place where they can go? Is there like a, a slot that he could just like lay it down and put it there? Uh, at the or bar or at the they beach? Just... What do you mean? Sorry. Let me... I'm walking up to the hut and there's yeah. like just weapons thrown around it. Yeah, there's some people who have discarded weapons and they're just kind of like lying on the ground. And then there's a couple of people who have like clubs still tucked at their sides at the bar. Oh, he'll keep it tucked. He'll keep it by his side then. If yeah. other people have weapons, he'll keep it. Mm -hmm. Sure. You come on up to the bar. There are like eight stools. Four of them are taken. Um, there's a bartender on the other side of the kind of old warped with weather uh, bar who has rubbing out a clean glass made out of brass with a, a rag. And uh, gives you a, a bit of a nod and starts to fill the, the little glass underneath the bar. And as the, you get to the table, he sets it down before you. He says, hello there. Um, Vasher will reply and say, well met. Uh, and he'll take the brass cup and kind of nurse it in his hands, not really drinking it. Mm -hmm. And he'll ask, where am I? You'll... You're in Haven. Safe place. Vasher will nod and then take a, a drink of the drink. Um, how does Vasher feel right now? Does he kind of feel at peace? Probably confused. Maybe at peace. It's a calm, relaxing environment. You know, it's nighttime. There's a gentle beach. You've got a nice, cool drink in your hand. It's kind of warm out. Um, but, you know, we can um, get to this on your next turn. Uh, so let's return to the battle because I think your horse is very angry. Right? Yeah, the horse is super angry and it will lash out at uh, our good friend Cassius with a 22 to hit. Uh, nice. That hey. is a... That is a hit. That's 2d6 plus 4, 9 damage. Okay, get wrecked. Ooh, all right. 9 to Cassius. Uh, I also need to add you back in the order so I can't forget that you have your thing. Uh, I am scamp. Yes, you are scamp. All right, the next bodyguard goes. The, the what's it called? Dude is down. Bodyguard's going to come on over here. Coming to. Wait, did you skip me? Oh, I did skip you. I totally skipped you, Cassian. I am so sorry. Please take your turn. Thank you. But is the bodyguard back? Bodyguard is back. Yeah. Christ. I am so Great weapon sorry. Weapon Master. Uh, not an advantage. This is a normal attack. Here you go. 13 is a hit. Four. 24? Dropping another one. Okay. Jesus. You need to heal, mate. Yeah, but I can do another attack, though. Mm. Yeah. I'm going to walk here. Oh, I'm going to think. Do I have Would I get advantage if I skirted? Oh, fuck, I'd provoke another. 
What, what if you skirt it the other way? Like... Oh, yeah. Can I do that? Uh, Can I skirt you would... up and over? Yes. Yes, that is successful. Okay. Here you go. This is an advantage. Another great weapon master attack. Mm -hmm. Let's get... Oh, oh, dude. The oh, dice mom. are not You're on so your unlucky. side. <laughs> All right. Um, so, I also, I want to remind everyone, I think all of us have inspiration, right? Wait, why? I know I have inspiration. I just thought we all got some at some point. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> this bodyguard comes over here and will multi-attack um, with the quarterstaff at advantage because she's got pack tactics and it's a miss. And her second attack is a 23. We'll Jeez. hit you for Wait, no. eight. Wait, oh, it's packed up to, if they're within five feet of the targets or within five yeah, yeah. fights of the... Yeah, she could have uh, moved okay. into either of these positions, but she has packed tactics, so she just stayed here. But, so you're doing um, eight? Yeah, eight damage. Okay, um, take my five off. Mm-hmm. Seven. Oops, sorry. This melee minion does need to make a morale check since so many people around him are dying and will fail and just bolt like melee minions do. Uh, steer mirror. Okay. Um. <clears throat> uh, I'm gonna move away from this person taking an attack of opportunity. Ah, miss. Missing. Um, okay, let me just get my movement right here. He's probably going for Cassian, but I move to here. Mm hmm. I think. Just checking, just checking. Yeah, I'm out of his range there, right, Neil? Uh, you think so? Okay. I think I was going to get the minions, but they're kind of mostly being cleaned up and might run, so I'm going to cast Guiding Bolt. Uh, Cassius. Um, do I have inspiration, Neil, for any chance? Maybe for the recap? Uh, is it on your character sheet? You no, it's just, I just think maybe recap, you forgot. Though. I think maybe you forgot to say it, is what I was asking. That's true. You did give a good recap. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Inspiration. Okay. I think that is our, our usual deal. Did he really? No one heard it. <laughs> I am using uh, my inspiration for this guiding bolt on him. If I use love, if I cast this at level two, what does it do? Just Increase it by D6. That's not. It's not worth it. Okay. I just cast it at level one. All right. Guiding Bolt. Let's go. Advantage. 25. Yes. It's at 19. Fuck. Neil, can we get a plus one on that? Anyway. Wouldn't matter. Wouldn't matter. For a crit, I mean. No, I can't increase um, the natural die by one for you. I'm so sorry. Okay. 14 damage. And... Um, the next and attack roll made. Yes. You're going to come fucking murder me. <laughs> yes. All right, Mitz. Mitz absolutely needs to make a morale check here and no. is fucking done. Oh, I'm sorry, Cassius. I'm sorry. Yeah. I didn't mean it. <laughs> uh, Mitz is out. <laughs> Cassius. Come on. This is going to have to be the luckiest <laughs> ever rolls I ever saw in my life. You know what? This guy up here, he's so close to dead. He's so close to dead. His minions can handle this shit. So Cassius is going to move and dash. Attack of opportunity. From whom? The horse. The horse. <laughs> the horse has to be wielding a weapon to get an attack of opportunity, right? Oh, come on. You no don't get way. to make a, a punch attack Hold of on. opportunity. If, so if, wait, there was if I was giant, Wolverine, yeah. if I was if, well, Wolverine and I had the claws coming out of my claw, you wouldn't let me get ooh, Well, I think those are weapons. Okay, what if there's but a giant and he's using his fists and you run away from the giant? Is he not going to get an opportunity attack? If the giant is using fists and you run away, the giant does not get an opportunity attack, correct? Okay. Yes, 100%. Okay, well, I think I'm, I'm double checking the, the rules now, but I think. Claws, the no creature. Like, no griffin animal should ever get an opportunity attack again. Uh, they yeah. have natural weapons, it's called, but... My hooves are natural weapons. That might be true. Hold on, here we go. Da -da -da. You can make an opportunity attack against a hostile creature you can see when it moves out of your reach. To make an opportunity attack, your reaction to make one melee... Melee attack against... Oh, no, I'm sorry. I must be confusing 2e and 5e. Your horse totally gets an attack of opportunity. Did Archie not crit. get attacks of opportunities? Wow, I rolled a one. Uh, All that rules lawyering for a No, moment. you did, because you're 
you took the the pugless feat that allows you oh, to. Oh, right, right. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, cool. I so your horse one. misses. I see that. Oh yes. my fucking god! It's beautiful. <laughs> um, the cash just moves all the way up next to Steermare. I'm actually a little bit behind him. And the melee this is a dead melee minion. This bodyguard will come on over here next to Steermare and shove DC 12 athletics or acrobatics. 20 keeps you afoot, and she shoves you again. 15. Fuck you. Yes. Oh, nice. Mika. <laughs> okay. To find another angle. The question is, do I try to what? save? Okay. Do I try to save Cassian up there? Or do I help? Who tried to attack Cassius? They have advantage. No. Oh. Better off saving that for my next attack, but the horse technically should have had an advantage because of uh, Guiding Bolt. Uh, Neil. Cassian, oh, you're going to be thought, okay. I thought Guiding you, Bolt works the other way around. I thought this guy had disadvantage, but you're, he actually, the next attack against him has advantage. So yes, the horse should have advantage on the bolt. hooves. But does the horse really use up the guiding ball? Absolutely. I mean. A 100%. Vasher, kick me again. Fuck me. Come on, oh, natural yeah. 20. Please. Hold on. From a 1 to a 20. Kick Think me. of the real. It would be so good. Come on. <gasps> oh, 14. 14's a miss. Sorry. All right. Vika, have you figured out your stuffs? We should probably deal with Cassius. Got to put damage on Cassius, yeah. But he has to it's the only way. Okay. Um, Vika's gonna move here. Booking attack of opportunity! Wait, Hits. whoa. No? Yeah, you're right. Nothing I can do about that, huh? I mm. already declared my action. He's fucking dead. Fuck it. How much Clap. health is there? Three damage. How much health? Vika's at one. Yes. We're fine. Okay. Fuck okay, yeah. so we do. I do get a move. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. cool. Finally, a little bit of fucking luck. Um, to there. Excellent. Yeah, I will angle the cone so that it doesn't fucking... It, it only hits mm -hmm. Cassius. Mm -hmm. And I will roll you 3d6 for Dragon's Breath. Cassius makes a dexterity saving throw. Uh, it's a 17. They will pass and take four damage. That is what it is. Roy Waystar. There's a lot going on here. Basher's dead. Yeah, um... Magic missile level two. Mm hmm. And um, three, four plus three. Yep. Come on, come on. Yes. Ooh, really good. 16. And bonus action. Um, oh. Roy casts Expeditious Retreat on himself. Can't cast two spells. Uh, oh, yeah, you're plus right, you're right, one right. is a cantrip, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're right. Sorry. Yeah, well, I guess we're done. Wait, we always round up. It's one extra damage, right? Oh, right, right. We always round up. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, this okay, person huge. will move to get you on that. up. Yeah. And will, with advantage, no. now oh, club at on. you. 18 <sighs> is a hit. Oh, Dude, is a melee it's, minion going to be your death? It's six damage. So Bring stupid. you to one. We're at one. <laughs> Basher. Yeah. Buddy, you are. Uh, I'm hanging out of Haven. Hanging out in Haven. Yeah, you're, you're looking around. It's, it's nice on the beach. It's, it's quiet. Bartender pours you a, a drink. You can look to your left and right and see there's some other folks here. Um, I looked at the bartender and say I wasn't finished. Uh, you know, most of us aren't. There's a lot of stuff to do out there, but... Well... You only get to go around once. Uh, Vashi says... I want to go back. My friends need me. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's a tough break. But you know, they're gonna, and he kind of looks over to a barrel next to him, and he frowns, he goes, oh. Oh yeah, they do need you. 
That doesn't look what very do good. What do you see? I like climb over the bar and look into the yeah. barrel. Um, the the surface of the barrel is water, and it looks like um, it's sort of you can see a s image superimposed on it of the the battlefield where your friends are fighting for their life. You can see Cassian being clubbed in the side of the head by this minion over here and like reeling from it. And he's barely standing. He's clearly about to go down. Like he's he's on the verge of death and he's surrounded by his enemies. You can see Steermere is pincered between the, the fearsome dwarven warrior and one of these bodyguards. Um, and you can see the fear in Roy's eyes, and you know he's about to run away. I try to reach my hand through Ugh, the water. It disturbs the, the image, and bartender goes, oh, man, it's going to take, like, 15 minutes to calm down again. Oh, well. Um, one of the, the people next to you kind of elbows you and gives you a bit of a glare, and uh, you recognize them as one of these... Um, bodyguards that you had just killed or that Cassian had just like ripped into shreds. Vasher refuses to accept that he's dead and that his death is just and attacks the guy that is dead. You attack the, the bartender on the other side? No, he attacks he attacks the other bandit. Oh, the other bandit <laughs> with your sword? He's like, this is bullshit, send me back. Go ahead, make me an attack roll, Vasher. <laughs> <laughs> you have advantage. They're not paying attention. They're sort of sitting down. He refuses to accept his death. Mm -hmm. uh, longsword with advantage. That's Absolutely. Yeah, your longsword goes right into them. How much damage do you deal? They've got 32 Six. HP. Yeah, the sword goes into their side and comes back out completely clean. And they don't flinch. Like, they, they didn't even feel it. In fact, you didn't I'm, even I'm feel their body. Send me back. He shakes his head. I, I can't do that. Sorry. Luke. Who can? I ain't a god, and only gods can raise people from the dead. You see a tentacle emerge from the barrel. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, back on the prime material plane. Um, come on, Cassian. Come on. You've got to kill horse. both of these guys and hey. come in and fucking save me. I attack there. the guy. Oh, wait, the horse, the horse, the, the horse. horse. The horse, true. The horse knows that he needs to tank the dwarf. Well, He's gonna go and fight Cassius. I don't know. Cassius is no longer here. Like Cassius has moved away. This guy. Yeah, but is the horse going to mourn the body? Intelligence uh, check for the horse. Wait, it's low. Wait, do you contact? The needs horse a rage off? check. Do you whistle for the war horse's help? This is the question. Can Me? anyone no. whistle for your war horse's help aside from you? Would that ever have worked? Maybe. There, there are think? three outcomes here. One, the horse is in combat and it doesn't like to be in combat and it's just going to try and like survive and stay away from enemies. Two, it's going to come and mourn your body and protect your body from others. Or three, it's going to go mad with rage and try and attack things. Um, I don't know what uh, the I distribution think... is on those, but let's call them even. I, th uh, I think the horse can't... Uh... I don't think... like so. From the horse's perspective, there's probably not very many ways to get away, right? We're seeing, we're probably in like a valley and it's like, you go this way or you go this way. Uh, we've just come around. There's not really like a way out this way, correct? So the horse is probably thinking like, well, I know this guy and I know this guy and I know this guy, but I don't know this guy. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to hoof the guy I don't know. You think the war horse is going to go just like, I'm going to murder all the things that I don't know now that my rider is dead? No, I think what it's doing is it's heading back the way that it recognizes this way. And so it might just way, ignore that person? Might it just like... No, it's trampling them. It's getting them. <laughs> <laughs> Look, the horse is thick. It's heading straight this way. It goes right through them. Wouldn't that also go through Steermere? Yeah, but it only gets one attack around. True. Very simple, <laughs> Koivu. Use your brain for a moment. <laughs> All right. If you can roll me a 13 or better on a d20, I'll accept your your horse logic horse math uh vasher's oh, body has smart. like slid off the horse a bit and is like pulling the reins so the horse <laughs> wants to go that direction horsecraft i'm just theory horsecrafting all right if vasher's body is sliding off then make it a nine or better oh there you go. 13. all right I got okay you. i got you okay uh no i want to ask you a question is that 20 feet that he's moving 
Yeah, it is if I go here. Oh, come on. Give me that 20 feet so I can knock him prone. Yes, do that. That would help me out big time. Knock him prone. Oh, uh, let's go. Come on. This he is just died. He just yeah. died. Come on. This would be 15 to here. here. This would be 20 he to here. Cut his head off. Yeah. It's moving in a straight line. He's trampling charge. What does that bring it to like this position, which is essentially this position? Would it not actually only just be five feet of movement? Ten feet of movement, uh, I mean, to get to no, here. Because if we if we measure it from the horse's ass to here. Yeah. Horse math. Because he's gotta have to turn No, that's legit, because he's gotta turn his ass to it, so like kick, right? Wait, am I go wait, am I going for the dwarf or for the Oh yeah, I'm gonna knock the dwarf prone, right? I don't no. think you're gonna be able to knock the dwarf. I think, I think, knock the, knock the I think you can go here, and then you don't get your twenty feet of movement. <laughs> hey, attack. listen, the horse is no, no, the horse okay, is trying just, to get around. I don't is think about the to horse die. is getting um, around. <laughs> Cassian's about to die. Come on, make make the make the horse. Thirteen will hit. A hit, nice. This is gonna be a max damage. We're talking. Let's see. It. Come on. Sixteen, fourteen damage. Oh, nice. that is actually okay. terrifying, uh, Cassian. One hit point surrounded. That's life. Cassian is doing? going to use great weapon mastery on the person on his left, the 10 AC person. Okay. An 11. Hit. It's a hit. Sorry, it was advantage. It should have been normal, but it's fine. It's a hit either way. For 22. Doesn't quite kill them. And he's going to use second wind, which is 1d10 plus 4 HP heal. Oh, that's a lot. Shoot. All right. The bodyguard fails their morale check um, and will disengage and get the fuck out. It's just you and me, big boy. You sure you want to die today? Uh, Steermir takes a turn. He sounds exactly like Mitz, by the way. I don't know. <laughs> hey, are you related to Mitz? <laughs> okay. My brother. Uh, quick question here. Roy hasn't moved this turn. Is it possible that Roy can use this movement? No. Okay. The thing is, if I stay here, if I end my turn within 20 feet of this door, <laughs> you I'm going to I'm going to die. So I need to take an attack of opportunity. So I'm going to move 30 feet uh, to like, yeah, to like the, yeah, to like here. If you, he does do 2d12. You might need to disengage. I got 24 health. I think I can survive it. If you can be within 30 feet of Vika. Wait, oh, he's serious question. Can't you just disengage and do your 30 move and he can't get to you? Hey, no, but he's going to kill Roy. I need to put damage on him. Oh. All right. Well, good luck. If you can get within the range of Vika's movement, by the way, I can maybe mm -hmm. just retreat you through Vika, but I don't know if that's relevant. We've got more movement than him. I think we don't, yeah, we don't need it. I think we just got to put the damage on him. So I'm going to move down to here, okay. taking the attack of opportunity nail from both of them. All right, here is the bodyguard. Uh, 17 okay. will hit you for three. Wait, can and... I say that the bodyguard might need a morale check before that? Or is uh, that on their turn? Morale check on their turn, yeah. Got it. And well, just don't do 21 damage. Just don't do 21 damage. Cassius Silver Bars. Whoosh. Bro, Fuck you! I actually cannot believe that. Fucking bullshit. Insane. Oh, that's. So I knew it was gonna happen. Wow. I knew it was gonna happen. Wow. What is you that? Oh my. How am I meant to know he's gonna roll a crit and do thirty damage? It's such fucking bullshit. I'm so. He's annoyed. got advantage, uh, and it's Koibu. Cash just comes to Roy. He doesn't even have advantage. He was flanking. Uh, well, maybe, he, I suppose. Yeah, but he wouldn't have had advantage because you leave the square at this point. By the time you, you're you yeah. no longer threatening, whoops, uh, you'd be in a different place. He yeah, comes wait, up to Roy. I, wait, I still, can I still use my hellish rebuke thing to do the 282? No, you're dead. As I go down? <laughs> you're dead. Roy, he looks at you in the face and he brings his axe up. 14 will hit you. Shield? Actually, it won't. Hey. Mm -hmm. He growls. He axes so you again. Oh, you're that one will hit you. No, I'm dead. And he'll Hello? do 19, and you go Goodbye. down. And he'll axe your body one more time. Miss. Uh, 11 will hit. Dex maybe not, though. Oh, actually, no, it won't, because his shield is still in effect. Um, but he, the 21, because he's prone, it does make it a hit. And the 11 will kill Roy, and Roy will die as well. 
it looks like the party is not long for this world. Last bodyguard comes on over to you. Yeah, and wait, we'll I think I can still do the hellish rebuke. It says whenever I get hit, why not? I, I think you should be able to. Is it, yeah. do you need to take damage? Yeah. Then how well, can you use an ability turn, when you take damage? When you're uh, unconscious. It's unconscious. When a yeah, creature within five damage. feet of you that you can see hits you with an attack, you can use your reaction to cause the creature to make a deck. All right, it's hit. It's not deals you. damage with an attack. Go for it. Yeah, okay. Fuck off. Just the... Just the spit. <laughs> bodyguard uh, that bodyguard should have to make a... Hold on. That bodyguard should have to make a... Oh, yeah. No, you're right. Save. Morale check. Uh, that See is ya. a failure. So instead of going there, uh, they dip this way. And they get hit by the horse. <laughs> yes. Yes. I do believe the horse gets a free attack of opportunity on Please. the bodyguard as it's running Bad away. Sure. It's a dark day oh, here. What is it? 2d8? There you go. Eight damage. Uh, uh, attack roll, please, with the horse, though. Oh, uh, can you do the attack roll with the horse? Yeah. He's not listening. I'll do it. D20. Hooves. Oh, there you go. He got it. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I got an email and I You're zoned good. out because I'm mad that I'm dead. Yes. <laughs> You're yes. Good. It right. hits for eight. It hits for eight and flees. Vika goes, but Roy's gone, so I don't know if, what Vika... If Vika even exists, it's a familiar. At the very least, it's going to breathe fire on on this guy. So, Roy, give me 3d6. But it's getting very gray here. Passes. He takes five. Uh, Roy Waystar, you also wake up on a beach. Is he dead? Thank dead? Yeah. Yeah. It did. Oh, thank God it was a dream. Whew. I thought... Uh... Whew. All right, I'll, I'll also head over to the hut. Mm -hmm. You hear the sounds of commotion as Vasher is tearing the place apart to the best of his ability. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see Vasher there doing exactly what he says, trying to tear the place apart. And the bartender's there with his hands in the air like, oh, God damn it. And the other patrons have sort of like walked away and they're just sort of sipping their drinks. V Vasher, what are you what are you doing? I had the weirdest dream. Let me tell you what's happening. Vasher turns to Roy and says, Roy, it's not fair. I'm supposed to be down there helping. Wait, what are you doing here? What's not What's not fair? I wasn't finished. We weren't finished. We had We had to save Arnold. Well, well yeah, we can still save Arnold. Don't worry. Uh, Roy, we're dead. No, that was that was a dream. Remember? No, this I... is the last sleep. I'm probably still dreaming. Fuck. Roy Bar punches himself. Bartender pours you a, a glass of wine and brings it over to you. Welcome to Haven. Nice to have you. It's... Oh my god. So how do I... Can I... I try, to, I try to pinch myself again? It doesn't really hurt. You don't really feel it even. Not sure how do we... What, where is... Where is everyone? Where's Stumir? Where's Cassian? Oh, we're gonna I find out. Go, like, rubs his face and says, I think they're still down there. The melee minion will take an attack against uh, Cassian, Cassian, Cassian for seven. And Vasher will take a wow. turn here in this world. Haven. I'll channel divinity to make my horse more powerful. No. Um, <laughs> fuck. Um, I will beg Val Monterius uh, that, to right the injustice of my death. I'll fall to my knees and start like praying for for mm. absolution and justice and something. Hmm. Yeah. That I had I had a quest to finish and that I I my oath I still have an oath to finish. I can't abandon my king by dying. Cassian. Is Arnold here? <laughs> <laughs> Great weapon master attack. Miss. You have to be joking me. Come on. I just am unlucky. Fuck. Um, that's all I can do. Right. This is a fleeing bodyguard steamer death save. 
Okay. Come on, Nick, please. It ain't over till it's over, baby. Let's go. It. I didn't hear no bell. Does Vash's prayers get me inspiration on my death save now? No, I'm sorry. Well, that's funny, no. Come on, I can feel it. You know, these are the moments. I take all the ones for this moment. Come on. Fuck. It's a pass. Okay. It's a pass, yeah. Cassius. He looks to Plax, who's standing there in awe, and he walks up. Oh my god, fucking brutal. <laughs> and he cuts Plax's head off, and he starts fucking heading back the other person. direction. Now this bodyguard has also fled. It's Vika's turn. I'm assuming Vika comes over here and, and breathes fire once more. Uh, Do it, Vika. 36. 18, 18, 18, 18. 36, baby. Oh, he fails it. He For fails eight. it. Uh, eight. He takes wait, wait, eight. Can I use inspiration? No, not, not. No. Not on damage rolls. Mm. Oh. You're dead. Uh, your inspiration's gone. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Roy, it's your turn on the beach again. Master's uh, praying. Um, Roy is going to collapse, and he's going to sit on the floor, and he's going to cry, like, really hard. Like, in, like, a really, really, really hard. And that's all he's going to do. Okay. It's legit reaction, really. Melee minion. Club attack. Come on, please fucking Cassian. miss. Against Cassian. Please. No advantage. It's yes. Miss. Yes. Vasher? Uh, Vasher yeah. is praying with all of his heart to just give. He's like, okay. I'll accept my death. Please just help my friends. Let them live through this. Let them escape. I don't care what it is. Give them something. I still had so much left to give. Give them a chance to save King Arnold. I'll accept my death. Velmatari, please. This is unjust to leave my friends without my assistance. Feel a hand on your shoulder. And when you look up, you see the great judge himself, Velmontarius. Child of Astaire and Tempos, God of Justice, standing before you. And he shakes his head very sadly. You've done the best that you can. It's time I that you rest. I can still do so much more. Please. I don't want to rest. I know. That's what made you one of my chosen. Your divine spirit your endless pursuit of what was right. You were a good boy. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll, I'll kind of turn to him and it'll almost be like an innocent or child's question. And he's basically like, who will give the people of Stormtide justice now? And that's going to be the end of my turn. Come on, fucking move. You've got to kill this guy. Cassian does his signature move. He pulls the sword up and he heaves it down with his great weapon mastery. Oh, 13. Fucking yes. hell. Finally. For 23. Okay, there's still hope. I believe that there's like, a little bit of there's You can a fucking do this. Okay. Um, hold on. I got a math. I got a math. Okay, do you some You know what math, else yeah. is spelled with? Ope. Cope. Okay, uh, this, is a, this is a stupid fucking dwarf, yeah? yeah. Stupid fucking dwarf, yeah. Can, are there any ranged weapons around? Perhaps a 20. bow that you could pick up? If he moves 20 towards you, you can I get know. the jump on him. Yeah. I know. And that is what he'll do, because he's not scared that of you. That is, and I'm going to fuck with him. So he's going to move 20 towards me, right? Yeah. That's probably the goal. Uh, yeah, he might dash towards you, actually. Or throw yeah, his axe at you. If he, if he dashes towards him, that leaves Vika still like active. Yeah. What if he throws his axe at you? Then he's got no axe. Then I'm fucked. <laughs> then I'm fucked. The, um, hey, Cassian will Texas. move there, and he will say, um... What does he say? Fight me honorably like you fought in the arena. Give me a, give me a warrior's death. That's and right. he, uh, readies an attack, which he doesn't have to ready. <sighs> Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. If I get the 20, do I get my turn? Yes. 
Oh my it, god. Wait, you have really to stand up. Can I ready an attack as a bonus action right here? No, because it I have takes an, an action attack. to ready your attack. Oh, it takes an action to ready. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. Well, he didn't have an, oh, he didn't have an action. Come on. Oh, it's fine. God. You're okay. We're going to make it out of here. <laughs> right. Cassius's turn. He takes a step towards Vika. Whap! Oh, he, he actually misses. misses. Miss. Whap! Oh, All right, well. there we okay, go. we got the 20 this out of the way. This guy fucking crits every attack. Minimum damage. Oh, well, not actually minimum, minimum, oh. but very low. Uh, he gets rid of Vika. <clears throat> Rip. Well, he doesn't have the movement to get to you, so he'll take a step forward. Um, and it's your turn again. Oh my god, come on! Nick, there's no way, hold on. There's there's so much of a way. He's a dwarf, and I, and I have a bow. How do you yeah. feel about it? It's so cringe. He'll dash, he'll dash up to you, and But then he can disengage to... and run, right? Yeah, but then I can disengage. I, it... This is the problem with being a fucking dwarf. He's always going to be able to run and dash up to you. Not if he gets to the horse. Then he's uh, no, 60 feet. I can't feet. ride the horse. And the horse is already fleeing. We had talked about how it was running and the path is clear and it's gone. Fight me, man. Fight me. I'm going to take a few steps back. No, oh, mate. You're asking to get throw the axe throw if you run. Um... And I am going to ready an attack. Okay. Yeah. Not you got much. me then, he says. And back, or Cassian looks like he's not hes not running. He's ready an attack, and he's ready. Steer mirror. That's save. Come on, Nick. Natural 20, please. No, oh, you're, just you're alive, stable. Though. Fuck. Now I can't roll. If I fail, I could have rolled again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cassius goes. Well, uh, she will move and dash and go, come adjacent okay. to you. Nice, good place, well played. Well played, Moose, come on, please. Make your attack. Is this a great weapon master or regular? No, you readied an action, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is, yeah, ready this is your, yeah. you're ready to attack. Let me think. I almost have to do a regular attack, right? Otherwise, yeah, you're... minus five. It means he has 21 AC yeah. if you do it right now. Uh. Okay, I'm doing a regular attack with my greatsword. Here you go. Goosh. Misses. Your turn. Dude, it's. <sighs> the look has been range. insane. The look has been insane range. in this fight. It's, act it's actually fucking crazy. The, the 20 to kill me. You wouldn't run. The, the, the 20, sorry, the crit, and then rolling 22 oh. damage on 2d12 to kill Basha. Exactly. is fucking mental. I can't believe yeah. it. So close. Been a good run, he says, and he attacked with his great sword. Not great weapon master. Mm -hmm. well, you might as well go for the great weapon master here, no? You need a, well, if I you do. get a 20 on the great weapon master, you might actually kill him. Yeah. You'd need a 20, though, maybe. I mean... Let's think about... Would he ever run if I hit him again? Or not, he's a hero. He will kill you if you don't kill yeah. him in this attack. All right, great weapon master. Might as well get a fucking 20. Come on, come on, come on, come on. This would be a very good YouTube short, huh? <sighs> yeah, this would be incredible. Oh, my God! Oh, oh, my God. Yes! <sighs> For <clears throat> 21 plus 5, that's going to be 26 damage. It's not I enough. I can't believe... What? Do I get great, great yeah, weapon fighting on like the crit what? as well, Koibu? Um, take or a look does at the it feet. Just do two die in take total. a look at the feet. I think the feet when might. When you roll one or two on a damage die for an attack, you make a melee weapon attack that you're wielding. Um, you can re-roll the die and must use the new roll, even if the new roll is a one or two. The weapon must have. Okay, so I can re-roll one of those dies on my second attack, yeah? No, but Great Weapon Master says when you score a critical hit with a melee weapon, you can make That's an true. extra bonus action attack. 
Um, your 2d6 looks like you rolled a 2 and a 1 and a, one. And a 4. So I should be, have another 1 that I can re-roll. Oh, no, 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 because the, the 2 got re-rolled into the 1, and then the other d6 was the 4. It wasn't a 2 and a 1, well, and then... Let's, yeah. Can we try that real quick? Can we just see? Well, you get a... Oh, yeah, I see what you mean. Go ahead. Yeah, you want to just roll a bunch of damage and see how it looks? Yeah, let's roll yeah, yeah. a bunch of 2d6s. Um, no, but... Don't roll two. Oh, do two d six are less than five or something. So you can see how it looks. Two d six are uh, like that. I can't see until you roll. Wait, it. You, you can yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know I get another attack, yeah, but I okay, want to see if I yeah. can get it here on the damage rather than have to worry yeah. about it. Right. So the it, yeah. So the uh, it rerolled the three until it became a six. Yeah. Yeah. So I should then get to re-roll that one. No, no, it, it did no, it correctly. No. It did it correctly. It does it correctly. Yeah. So I don't get to roll I don't get to re-roll on both of the damage dice? No, you did re-roll on both of the damage dice. Come on, mate. You just need to hit okay. this attack now. Yeah, you have right. one extra you have a bonus Great action attack. attack. <laughs> Is Here's it a regular bonus action attack? It's gonna it be a... a regular one, yeah. Yeah. Do you think you can do it? Do you think you can get that much HP on a regular I attack? I think I can. You need yeah. a sixteen or higher to hit. Twenty three. Yes. Nice. For ten. That is literally their HP. That is oh, literally yes! their yes! HP. Yes! What the fuck? We it. <laughs> Wait, that's Cassian's no. turn. Cassius's turn. Death saving throw. Oh, bullshit. Please, no. Bullshit. <laughs> Counter 20. <laughs> oh. Okay, thank God. Well, it's your turn, Boy, Cassian. I'm gonna do a um, attack with advantage. Yep. Uh, I should just do a regular attack, right? It's automatically a crit if I hit. Yes. So I just, I'm going to do a regular attack, not Grape but Weapon Master, for 19. That will hit. You will make two failed death 11. saves on them. Um, here's the other damage. It's 22. Yeah. Okay. You don't have any other actions, though, again. do you? Oh, it's an automatic uh, crit. Well, it's so automatic you get crit, so I get a attack. bonus action. Yeah. He's still wearing armor. It's 15 possible. is it dex. Hold on, let's see what the rules that we've talked about regarding um, combat. De uh, AC adjustments from decks do not apply when restraining, capacitated, or otherwise rendered immobile. So their decks will not apply to this situation. Um, so, so their AC is still 16 because they aren't getting any decks to their AC anyway. Weirdly, my AC is higher when I'm down. So they got a yeah, minus that's one. That's weird. Roll. All right, they get one more death save. Don't you fucking dare! Don't you fucking dare! Don't you dare, Neil! Just don't even roll it. Just give up. Oh! Oh! Fuck me! Okay, <laughs> here's another attack. Oh, insane! <sighs> I can't believe it! Yes. They're done. They die. Unbelievable. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, I'm out of, are we sure Roy was outright killed? Yeah. 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 Fuck. I go and check the pulses. Well, Vasher's head is gone. <laughs> Flax's head is gone. Roy's just, you know, a huge cut all the way through the middle of the body. Steermere is but unconscious and almost dead. His pulse but stable. is alive, but stable. Yes. Stable. 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 I take the healing potion off his body and I chug it. Good idea. Does it work? Yes, it does. Uh, takes 2d4 2 plus 2. Okay. I'll remove it. For 8? Mm-hmm. I take the other 2 and I drink them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a good idea. 44, 44 plus, plus 4. 4. Yeah. 14. Okay. I take a moment. I loot the bodies real quick. What do I got? Is Great Axe magical? Um, well, let's see. It read. is not a magic Great Axe, <laughs> um, but oh, you will find a potion on Cassius Silver Bars. A singular potion. Does it potion. look like the other ones? It does not look like the healing potions, no. It's a sort of it. how much purple and bubbly. How much money they got? Oh, uh, platinum, bag, like a full bag of, bag of platinum, so 50 plat. Actually, it's not a bag. It's a, the rope, right? It's a rope of platinum coins dangling off their side. I equip it. 
Mm-hmm. Um, what's their armor? Um, they're a fucking dwarf, huh? Dwarf, but it's half plate. Can I wear it? Um, yes. I think in 5e and Age of Heroes, we're going to say the armor can be sort of, it doesn't have to be resized. Plate mail, I'd make you resize, but um, yeah, half you plate. could okay, don put the it half on. plate. What's my uh, AC now? 16. Sick. Um, one more second. Okay, so I have the half plate on. I Can you describe how sick this great axe looks? Um, it is a pretty sweet great axe. It's got like a pair of holes that go through the middle of it to reduce the weight, but still maintain stability. It's got an iron spike at the bottom end. It's wrapped with uh, some sort of leather that you can't quite place. It's definitely not cowhide, it's something. Um, and it's got a little spike at the, the top end. It's nice and smooth on all on all the sides. It looks like um, some sort of hardened steel for the blade edge and some sort of softer steel for the center, giving it a nice um, ability to cut but still flex when it needs to. It's an extremely well-crafted, mundane battle axe. I go, this guy is the epic warrior. I was gonna say, you're gonna need his head, mate, or his axe yeah, gonna, or something. I'm gonna take it, yeah. I take the axe. I chop the head off. I go and get the horse. Oh, the horse that's like fucked off down away. Um, if you go after the horse, it. I'll give you an animal handling check. Give me a whistle. really good animal handling check. Yes, 17. A seventeen is a very good animal handling check. It will come back eventually. There, there, scamp. I sigh. I go over. Uh, I throw this guy on it. Mm-hmm. Steer mirror, throw him on the back. I um, spit on Cassius's body. D- did they have any documents on them? Anything of note other than the magic item, the great axe? Well, as you loot the bodies, you will see that his, her bodyguards were carrying um, some stuff, personal effects, books for writing, a ledger. All sorts of personal effects can be found here on these bodyguards. It would take you a while to decipher what all of that is and what it all means, but yeah, there's there there are personal belongings here, including extra money. Um, One of these bodyguards is carrying three ropes of gold, and the other two are carrying three ropes of silver each. So you can add take all the gold, 150 gold and 300 silver if you want. Um, I'll, I'm gonna tie this to the horse, kinda. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna get the cart. Mm-hmm. Gonna shove everything on it. Yeah. What are you, uh, what are you gonna do with I'm your friends? Do a burial. Here. It'll take a while to dig a grave. You don't. Oh, you do have a shovel. I have a shovel. Yeah, you guys rebought shovels. Yeah. Okay, so you can you can dig a shallow grave for your two friends pretty fast. Um, a deep grave would take you a long time, but a shallow I'm gonna one. I'm going to do doable. it. Um, I'm going to do it near this rock. This looks like a pretty iconic cave. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to put Roy here, and I'm going to put Vasher here, so it's on both sides of the rock. Do you have any words to say about them as you bury them? No, I think Cassian's pretty speechless right now. He's just kind of going through the motions. Um, he yeah, nobody can see this coming. <laughs> yeah, he'll come to the middle, and uh, he will say a prayer to Velmontarius, and ask him um, to make their rest go easy. Um, he says, "If you were going to bring them back, you already would have. I will continue this quest, and I'll make sure that it's done with Steermir. If you could provide us any aid." It would be uh it would be remarkable but i think you gods like to watch us uh do our song and dance more than actually intervene so i'll get through it and then um he'll jump on the horse he gathered up all the personal effects by the way mm-hmm. um the ledgers and stuff his goal right now is to take this all back to the lady um the farseer mm-hmm. with the head of cassius clay or not cassius clay sorry um cassius <clears throat> mm-hmm and see what he can bargain for, get, um, yeah. 
and he will uh, bury plaques as well. Sorry, forgot about that. What about the donkey? What about the donkey? If donkey's alive, bring the donkey. If I can bring the yes, donkey, I, mean. I will. Yeah. yeah. I think you ride the whole. Be... Oh no, no, because the donkey won't pull the cart on its own. Yeah. Will it? Or would it? If you attach a rope to it, could he like pull it along off his horse? It'll be slow going, but you can manage the horse and the donkey and the cart. You'll probably be moving at quarter speed since you have to deal with multiple I don't think animals, I care about the donkey, I'm going to be honest. I'll, I will okay. I'll wake up at some point and I can ride the donkey. I mean, let, me, let me roll something to see if I remember to bring the donkey. Um, D20 on a 15 or higher, I'll bring the donkey. Nice. Yeah, I bring the donkey. Okay. Yeah, it'll be slow going. Um, yeah. And um, before Steermere wakes up, we're going to take a look one more time from Haven. Our two party members there have mourned, had a chance to sort of come to grips with your situation. And as the, the tears begin to slow, however long that may take, bartender waves you over the, the barrel and says, look, they made it. And you can look down, the two of you, and see that Cassian and Stiermir are still alive. They've got half plate, I'm sorry, uh, breastplate armor and well, half plate, half plate armor and um, a whole bunch of gold and platinum silver in a cart and the head of Cassius silver bars. Uh, Vasher kind of like leans his hand on the barrel and like he is still um, incredibly determined to find a way back. But Sorry, he's... Corbett, did Velmontarius leave? Um, Vasher was talking to Velmontarius. Yeah, and then, and then there was some crying and some yeah. stuff, and, you know, a little time passes, and then he gets called over, and he looks around, and you don't see the god anywhere anymore. But there wasn't, like, a, a defining moment where he left. It was just sort of mm. out of sight for a moment, and then a distraction for a moment, and then you realize that the, the deity is gone. Sorry, Potato. Uh -huh. Yeah, no worries. Uh, he's like leaning, he's leaning into the barrel and he's sort of looking at it and I lost my train of thought. Fuck. Uh, <laughs> he's like the question of who will give uh, the Stormtide justice is answered by the fact that Cassian is still standing and the fact that he's seen his friend survive is the thing that gives him just enough peace to accept the fact that he's dead. And uh, he begins to sit down at the bar and comfort Roy, who I assume is still crying on the ground. He's uncomfortable. Well, that's a different word, actually. He's <laughs> is, inconsolable. Is, he's inconsolable. Um, he's thrashing. Um, and uh, he is... Um, babbling something about wanting to see his dad. He wants to get picked up by his dad, is what he's saying. I'll, uh, turn to the bartender, and I'll say, is there a library here? Bartender shakes his head. No, this is just the, the first stop, though. There's some other places you can go if you'd like. Or, he kind of points out, um, down the beach. Just move on. I think, I think we're not ready for that yet. And I'll like try to pick Roy up and scoop him up and see if I can find somewhere that we can go like learn things about the world. Like I don't know, be like, come on, Roy, maybe we can, maybe we can find out what your father's up to. And I'll like ask the bartender, like, how do we, how do we look down? There's some looking pools scattered across the area. Uh, you can just head out that way, and you point sort of inland away from the water. You'll find a fountain, or a basin, or a pool, or a creek, or you'll you'll find some water sources. Don't worry, yeah, I'll, no, I'll, nothing here will hurt you. I'll bring Roy there, and I'll uh, tell him, look, uh, you might be able to see your father there. Hmm? Can we see Roy's dad? Yeah, you come to a large pool. Um, it's got like you know a, a raised lip. It's made out of some nice white marble. It's maybe six feet across. It's got a, a column that rises in the middle that sort of gently pours water out of the top. It rolls down the sides. It doesn't you know splash or anything, but it just trickles down the sides and fills in with the rest of the pool. Um, it's very large, 
and when you come to sit down, whatever it is that you're thinking about sort of appears in a like a two foot section around you. So you could sit on one side and Basher could sit on a different side. You could both sort of see your own images or you could sit next to each other and watch what other someone else is looking at. Um, and you can see your dad back in the Stormtide Kingdom. I was going to save this role for the end of the campaign, um, but I suppose it's time to do it now. Somebody should roll me a d20 for how the political situation goes back home in your absence. Higher is more favorable to people keeping in line with good King Arnold's um, ideas. Vision. Yeah, lower is instability sooner. So uh, I'll do it. Wait, d20 or d100? D20. Oh, okay. 15. Yeah, you can see that your dad is in the king's court. He is holding meeting with a few other people whose names you recognize, other major families, other major players in the in the political game. And he's currently arguing for trying to send a second fleet to search for the one that went missing, the one that all contact was lost with. And everyone else is standing around saying, well, you know, most fleets that head out that way, most ships that head out that way don't come back. We've probably already lost them. Um, and if we haven't, well, Lazarus is there with them. Lady Lazarus, she'll she'll find a way back. Uh, we should really just trust the the fleet. Father's saying, well, my, my son, I've got to know. Like, if it's done, then it's done. There's nothing that can be done, but I got to know about my boy. And the other nobles are, are kind of putting the... the cooling on it, being like, well, he's either dead or, or everything is fine, and I know you're in pain, but, like, we're not going to expend these resources that it would take to send a second fleet out after them. And it, who knows how long it would take? It would take you months, maybe even a year, to find that information out. Like, let's just focus on the duties at hand. These ships could be used for better things. Our time and our resources and our spellcasters and our warriors could be used for better things. Isn't there that nation in the north who's seen that good King Arnold is dead and is readying their soldiers? We have real concerns to be worried about while the expedition goes on. And your father says, well, next week. I'll have a new idea for you next week. Um, Roy's touched because he sees that his father is worried about him. Um, but obviously he will also, uh, sink back down to the ground and start uncontrollably shaking and crying and shitting himself again. Um, can, can Roy summon Vika? Yes. He summons nice. Vika. And, uh... Is Vika in its ultimate form in this world? No. Vika's still just as you knew him. Yeah, Vika will just, he will just place Vika on his head. And um, he'll just curl up there. And uh, well, that's it. What else can you do when you're dead, man? Well, Vasher will stay with Roy and try to console him. Oh. I suppose it's time for a break. Mm -hmm. um, we'll see where we are on the other side of our break. Catch you guys then. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Lazarus Expedition. We're going to continue today's session. We're probably going to end a little bit early, uh, and we will tell you a little bit more about what's going to happen after that. But in the meantime, it is Cassian hauling this wagon with Steermere in the back and a whole bunch of loot and personal effects and belongings. <laughs> and um, you're headed back to... Scales Vale. Scales Veil. <clears throat> Don't forget to call out for mitts. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I, t I typed that in the chat. Yeah, oh, you did. When you guys were talking. So, yeah. I call out for mitts before leaving. Um, mitts, mitts will I've handled return. Them. Mitts will Sorry return. Sorry about your brother. High <laughs> <I> point. <laughs> oh. He wasn't really my brother, but uh, okay. He, he said he was. Oh, my God. You killed Cassian or C Cassius. Well, how'd you yeah. do that? Come on, we gotta go. I don't want to talk about it. Oh my god, Vasher. I barely knew him, but... 
Oh, who, I guess who I was, was the hero guy? all along, huh? What was the other one's name? The one with the bug. Cassian will shed one single tear. That was Roy. He wipes it. Oh, okay. Ride the donkey. They will ride the donkey. Um, Steermere, eventually you will awake in 1d4 uh, hours. In the back I'll of finally the car. awake. <laughs> I yeah, spit some later. blood out. <laughs> the, the fuck? What happened? We're alive? We are. Vasha. Vasha and Roy. Uh... Where's the boy? He got Roy too. Cassian's quiet. You sure they're dead? I've got magic. The horse hooves go. Wait, stop for a second. Let me get out of this cart. They're dead, Steermere. <clears throat> yeah, I know, I know. I need to. I need a minute. I'll pull I, uh, the horse to a halt. I climb out of the the cart, like barely able to stand, I imagine, and I start muttering the words to a healing spell, and cast cure wounds on myself. Uh, why isn't that? Why isn't I that use one? all our healing potions. Huh, well, I understand. So Just it's in case it's, we needed to get back. It's D eight plus my wisdom, so it's D eight plus four. I don't know. I cast at least one cure on myself. Cast another one. Fuck me. I cast a third one. Okay. I heal for 18 damage. I'm on 1 HP right now, so I'm on 19 now. Yep. Um, uh, I have one level 2 spell left. What should my AC be with half plate? Can I just like drag it on? <laughs> and yes. Work? Yes. I think it should be at 17 then. But I have no idea. What happened to the, the dwarf? I killed him. Or her. Fuck. Her. I killed her. Good job, Cassian. Good job. I'm not sure how you managed that. Well, what the hell do we do now? Where are we going? I point to the back, which has all of the stuff. <clears throat> We're going to bring this to the, the lady who sent us all on this in the first place. What about that body? Like his ledgers. I pull up the head on uh, the horse. He's right here. Or she's right I, here. I, I didn't mean her. I meant Roy and Basha. I gave them a proper burial. You say something to the gods? They don't listen. Give me a moment. I walk away from the car and uh, go down on my knees in the sand and just say a few prayers to Falumbra for Roy and Vasha to encourage their souls to have a safe and easy passage through the afterlife. And then I get back up. I take a bit of sand in my hand and I kind of go like this. And I walk back towards the, walk back to the cart. You mind if I uh, take a sit down for a while? Please. Crawl back into the, into the cart and sit back down. Do -do -do -do. We get going. Yeah. Um, Mitz. Yeah. If you run like that again, you're not gonna be running for someone. You're gonna be running for me. What? Come on! I'm not a great hero like you. I was gonna die. You could be one. Just gotta put your mind to it. There's no difference between you and I. People aren't born hey. heroes. They're made. What do you guys think the group should be called now? <laughs> <clears throat> I stay quiet as Cassian berates Mitz hmm. and consider our position. He was berating him, but he was also trying to give him some inspiration, you know? I think Vasher, yeah. or Cassian believes that no one's born a fucking hero. That Those days are gone. You earn it now. Mm hmm. Say, uh, Cassian, what's the plan when we get back to Scalesville? What about the Bandit Queen? No one's going to touch us with Cassius's head here. Seems legit. Okay. Yeah. Well. It will take you two days to get back, 
or you know like a day okay. and a quarter or something um, so we do have to camp yes there will Did be Roy one more have a spell book yes i would i would have taken it you're not gonna leave it on his body no you're not gonna bury it with him no i'm gonna take it okay please add a Roy's my... spell book to your character sheet can i use my last hit die for the one night that we rest yes yeah i'm gonna use mine Okay. <clears throat> cool. Um, as we get close to town, I want to approach the town on my feet, so I'll get out of the cart once we get close and walk. Okay. As I get to the gate, <clears throat> um, does the guard try to get money out of me? All right, hold on. Let me just finish this math yeah, right here. Out. Okay. Um, there we go. When so you yeah, get to Sekhmil, the... can you can you restart the music on roll twenty, please? Sorry. Oh yeah. It's a refresh. Thank you. Um, well, we should get town music because we're arriving in town anyway. So let's bring our map over to Scalesvale, and we can see that our party is entering in through the bottom side of the map this time, and you'll be coming in through this gate right here. Um, yeah, so you start to come on in, you come past this little, uh, I don't know, this complex of some kind, there's some sort of ruins and a maze, past the little farms, through some town, um, some little houses, and you get to the gate, and you can see there's a, a group of bandits on either side of the gate there, kind of keeping an eye on you, the gates are open, there's some guards standing around, uh, they see the two of you <clears> on a war horse coming on in with a wagon, and they hold up a as hand, and they're like, well, one gold per head. As we get one, closer, two, three, I, say, <clears throat> I say to Cassian, you killed her, so you can do what you want, but you want me to do the talking, or you want to take it? You can do the talking, Stiermir. I hand you uh, a bag of 50 gold. Thanks. What's this for? Uh, we have to pay to get in, so... All right. Um... I go up to the guards and say, one gold per head. I count four heads, five heads. Yep. Mm -hmm. I, I had him five gold. Yep. He waves you on in. Uh, You know, don't fight. No, you guys know the rules. And if there's any trouble that you're causing, it's on your head. Did anyone notice uh, Cassius's head on the side of my, I guess, I don't know, side? Well, I, that's a great question. I didn't realize that you were riding yeah, with it's it. Like, He's like, Cassian's riding with the head like on his side. So the head's just kind of like bobbling there. Let's redo that entire counter then. Thank you. You start okay. coming through the town. Cassius's, Cassius's head is hanging off of the front of the horse somehow. Great axe like is on my back. Yeah. Um, the first couple of people stop and look at you with horror and like freeze in place doing the like, oh my God, what's going on? And then the next group of people down ahead kind of see that there's some weird commotion. Um, and pretty soon, a couple of people scatter from before you and start running. So by the time you get to the city gates, folks are already on alert that someone is coming. Someone scary has arrived in town. And the gate doors are closed. And the guards have bows and spears out. And the bandits in front of the gate have mm -hmm. like are in the middle of packing up their camp. They're like tearing down their tent. They're pulling things up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As you arrive... And the people on the wall can see Cassius's head. And the people, the bandits in front of the gates, can see it's Cassius's head. And they go real quiet. And the bandits so leave I, their stuff and start to walk off to the sides, just abandoning their gear. I take a little step forward ahead of the horse and shout up to the guards. Guards, we need passage into the city. We've been attacked on the road by bandits. A knave named Cassius Silver bars. The gate opens a little bit. A single person sticks out their head. <laughs> this is a peaceful city. We have many clerics. We have many warriors. You come into the city. You must abide by the laws and the rules. There is to be no violence. No bloodshed. Our clerics are many numerous and powerful the high cleric themselves 
can call down the wrath upon the gods, and many of his uh, or her acolytes can divine the truth from the dead. Any there murders will be, no will be known. We're heroes, not villains. You're welcome for this. As we are servants the of the, the good gods. You'll have no trouble from us. We were just defending ourselves. The gate opens all the way. They don't ask you for money. Based. <laughs> nice. Fuck yeah. Uh, we go five, right five. to... Um... Farseer? Farseer, I say yeah. to Cassian. Yeah, all right, let's and, go. Uh, I kind of go through the ledgers um, during our two nights that we're traveling. Um, does it seem like there's like, what's the word? Like, uh, Well, first, like make me an investigation tickets? check. Yeah. Because the ledgers are not super clear. Um, God, oh, know. with a five, you're kind of screwed here because Cassius is writing in some sort of, not quite like a full-fledged cipher, but some sort of code. code. There's abbreviations and numbers, but like the columns aren't labeled and you kind of have to okay. know what it means to know what the numbers mean or the abbreviations might mean. And with a five on your investigation, it's, it, it's just gibberish to you. Would, I, would an I would ask. Int okay. Oh, sorry. I would I would ask um, Steermere if he could check the ledgers the next day yeah. and see if okay. he has anything. Same thing for you, Steermere. Mitz, Mitz as well. Well, I maybe approach it from a di different angle. I'm not trying to fully understand all the figures and everything that's happening. I would maybe like to try and get an impression of what these documents are and the overall impression that they're giving me. So I'm trying to argue for an insight rather than Yeah, uh, uh, go ahead and give me an insight check to get an overview of what this is. Yeah, cool. this is definitely some sort of... Uh, we would call it like a, a, a bookkeeping or some sort of master ledger that contains yeah. sources of income like and from where they're flowing and to where they're flowing. And these markings here are probably some sort of inventory on this page, but maybe they might, you can't tell what anything means, but it looks like there's inventory warehouses, accounts that are coming through and flow uh, in and out. All of the ink in the book is relatively fresh, like, you know, in the last couple of months, it's not super old. So this is probably a book that is having to be like rewritten every so often as things change since you can't erase. I okay. say, uh, I, yeah, I think this is an account of his businesses, essentially. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what each of the individual lines are, but looks to be some sort of accounting of inventory, uh, the deals he's made, where things are going, who's buying what, etc. Might be of use to Farseer. How does it work if you do a duel with someone? Do I get all their lands? Uh, who can knows in this his, place? Can I free her slaves? Well, that's what I can't really go to with uh, any kids she had, I suppose. God knows what they'll do here. We go to Farseer. Okay. You arrive at the door. Um, the guards at the house eye you up and down, and then they see Ashes' head on your saddle and uh, quickly like rap on the door. Um, Someone answers from the inside and there's a, a hurry of hushed whispers um, and the door opens all the way in and the guards, without even asking you anything, wave you inside while a, a servant of some kind Mitch, comes to like take the reins of your Pick up the horse. books. All right. It grabs the books. Was that name Julia Farsia, Neil? Yes, it was. I say to one of the guards, is Julia around? Without a word, they nod, and the person who opened the door sort of shows you in. We bring Good. the books into the room, I assume. Say, buddy, uh, you got something to drink? Mm hmm. I can get you some refreshments. Thank you. I bring the head. Okay. In you go. The guide will lead you back to that same room through doors and upstairs. I think this is back the loop. Uh, until you arrive at that same room with the half table pushed up against the glass window. I'm only, you know, Julia's not on the other side yet. As you, you come in and you, you sit down, the person who leads you here tells you to. I'll wait say, a few I minutes. would like to speak to Julia, uh, not behind the looking glass this time. They nod in understanding and leave you in this room with some refreshments. Put the uh, head on the table, Cassian. Yeah, Cassian will put the head on the table and turn the eyes to be facing wherever Julia is going to come from. Like, I assume there's a proper door. 
Yeah, there's the door the that you came to through, too. and then there's yeah. the window, but that's it. There's only I'm gonna there's put only it through the door entrance. that we came through. Yeah. 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 I take a sit back. Uh, I pour myself a drink and hand it to Cassian. A drink. And then I uh, I pour, I pour myself. I pour and... a drink for Mitt. Uh, yeah, I I raise a toast to uh to lost friends. Let me have a drink. There's a clank of the glass, and then Cassian downs it all in one yeah. go. Not coming through Think, the door uh, that you want her to. Julia will come in to the on the other side of the glass, but go ahead, Stamir. I was just gonna say, I think Stamir like pats, puts an arm around Cassian's shoulder and pats him on the back in a sort of friendly gesture in a way that maybe he hasn't done before. And then I'll take a seat kind of away from the front of the room, allowing Cassian to take the lead and just like lean back in his chair and have a drink. Cassian, can he hear her coming through the other door? Yeah, I think or you can that. hear the other door shutting. It's kind of faint. It's enough to alert you to her um, presence. He's not looking towards that. He's still looking forward with the head and all. But, like, I assume Stearmere and him are kind of placed, like, expecting her to come through that door. And he'll say, uh, <clears throat> two of my friends died today. I request that you come have a drink for me, with me. And we can have our conversation in here. If you want, your guards can take our weapons, if that's what you fear. My apologies for the loss of your friends. We didn't get to cork. Well, we did get to the uh, roots of the problem. I can see that. Congratulations. I have, I have her yeah. ledgers. Uh, and other documents. I haven't had time to go through them yet. What would you have to offer me for these? You know our quest. I do. It's not just that, uh, Mrs. Farseer. As I understand the way this land works, this Cassius person had a lot of influence around here. Uh, we are down half of our party and would like to find a way to capitalize on these events. And perhaps you could assist us in that. Hmm. She sits quietly for a moment. I see many things near and far, yet this incident is not one I could have predicted. In this land, strange as it may be to you, an individual's name is their greatest commodity, their greatest tool their most powerful asset. You, having slain Cassius Silverbars, one of the great movers and shakers in Scales Vale and all up and down the Great River, will undoubtedly add much glory to your name. For Do all I... the details. How does it work here? Do I get control of Cassius' estates? her slaves you go there right now and make demands and act as though you have taken over her things some of her people may switch to you some of her assets may fall into your hands it depends on how how strong your force of will is how much you can bring people with you. Well, here's the thing, uh, Julia. We don't really have much interest in sticking around in Scales Vale, unlike yourself. There's a whole Coliseum over there, a bunch of goons, I imagine, sitting around with uh, no one to follow. Perhaps you could assist us in a show of force. Perhaps the Coliseum and the assets in the city could be yours in exchange for uh, some more concrete assistance from you to us. I understand that you are looking for tools to help you on your journey rather than burdens to tie you to the city. Indeed. You seem like a, a magic type. Someone with well-resourced. Uh, 
perhaps you have some items that you could uh, that we could make use of that you might exchange for a Colosseum and a bunch of goods. You should go now, then. Cassius's house to the arena and make your presence known. Demand what is right, believe yours. Cool one, You're and fine, come to me after with what you have, and we shall make a deal. Cassian will get up. Um, instruct Mitz to bring the books. Sumir, I just had a brilliant idea. Come on. Thank you, Lady Farseer. We'll be back. Thanks for the drink, I say, finishing my wine and putting the glass down. Mm. We'll speak soon. She doesn't get up. She stays seated on the other side of the glass window and watches you leave. Um, we'll go... Here's my idea, Nick. Tell me if this is cool. Well, I, I, got, I get out and say, so okay. what's the big idea? Are you in the hallway of this place, or are you leaving the house before you... No, I think we leave the house, yeah. We're leaving, okay. yeah. And we're walking. Um, Cassian's heading towards the estates and the Coliseum. Tell me which way you want to go. I say we go to the Coliseum, we go to the middle. I pronounce Cassius dead by my hand. I throw the head in, and I um, take over what I can. I have them bring me... Uh, what is it? The weapons? The slaves? I do a show of force, I free the slaves, I take the magic items, and we leave. I don't know how you think they've got magic items down there. Sounded like it. Um, or maybe we just need to go and proclaim our ownership of the Colosseum of the estate. I know we've used some healing magic, but neither of us in a best shape for a fight. And if we free all the slaves, we've got nothing left to trade for us here. I agree that we shouldn't through this. I actually agree that we shouldn't until we're about to leave with our boon from Farseer. And I will thank her for her decision <clears throat> to free Cassius's slaves. Good idea. I think we're better off going to his house than we are going to his arena. If we go to the arena, it's going to be full of people looking for a fight. If we go to his house, we'll get a few guards. They'll probably freak out when they see his head. They won't, they won't take a fight. Well, our free reign of the place. We go, we go to the house, then we go to the arena with our newfound people who are scared, yeah? Yeah, yeah. But give us legitimacy if we've got some stuff from his house. If we've got some of his guards with us. Uh, guards. Is, that, is she a woman, Dale? Yeah. Uh, I think the Cassius is supposed to be a man, but I think the pronouns on the character sheet are all feminine. Okay. Uh, okay. So, so That's a man. He, That's fine. He, yeah. Yes, yeah. Cassius. Yeah. We go to the house. I... Uh... I just, I show the head. I show the axe. I'm wearing the plate mail, or mm -hmm. the half plate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you show Excuse up me. to the house. As you get to the front door, you can see that there are servants with like arms full of things that are like hurrying out the building. One's got like a silver tray with candlesticks and, and forks and knives and all sorts of stuff. And they're just like running out the front door. I put up the axe, like I hold it up. Servants? Give me an intimidation check. You see 10. Yes! They stop. They drop the tray. The silver clatters to the ground. Pick up my things. Bring them inside. Yes, my lord. They gather the Bring things. Bring me my guards. They head back Good inside. Um, some servants quickly gather together in a parlor. Actually, not probably not a parlor. Probably the, the main dining room. Um, and everyone Cassie gathers yelling there. Orders. He's used to, you know... We, they don't have slaves, but they have servants where mm -hmm. he's from. So he's used to dealing with this. He's going to be barking. Um, he wants, like, the big things. So, like, the deed to the house. You know, um, the books. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, Cassius's, like, ledger. Um, yeah. Cassius's, if, yeah. He's barking yeah. orders around. And he'll get everybody up. And he'll, um, <clears throat> if there's no hitches, he'll grab the things. Give them to Mitz so Mitz can hold them. Well, the things will soon outweigh what Mitz can carry. What happens with the guards? Piled though? on the desk. Well, some guards have already fled. Some guards have stuck around to see what's going to happen and if maybe there's someone else to join with. And so they're just present right. in the room. I'm um, hanging out. So it out. literally just happens as easy as that. Yeah. They all just start doing well, what we say because we have his head and stuff. We'll see, right? The, mm. This is the, the moment where they're standing around being like, what is this new person who's shown up? Is this a person that I actively want to follow? 
or maybe they'll give me some orders and then I'll just fuck off because this isn't my vibe. Um, but for now, they're going along. It, let's, you haven't necessarily solidified your rule, but 19 on intimidation, at least cows everybody to listen to you for the time being. I get, um, I get the head servant. Mm -hmm. I have him handle it. I want these things brought here. Um, I say Lady Farseer's house. Mm -hmm. Please handle that. And you are going to handle the estate in my absence for the next hour or so while I go to the Coliseum and bring people in tow. Um, mm. I, is there like a head guard? Can I suss him out? Um... Uh, yes. I think I probably what happens is I go up to one of the guards and I'll say, uh, "You, who's in charge here? Who's in charge of the men?" I am," says one of the guards. "You're gonna need to speak to Cassian over there. Let's go." Hey, walk on over. I'm the I hand him, um He says, "I hand him a bag of gold, slyly. If you want a sleight of hand check, show me how slight you are." Nineteen. Oh my God, I killed Ooh. it. Uh, yeah, he takes um, the I rope. I hand him a bag of gold. Quickly pockets it. Need to get these soldiers in line. We're going Understood. to the Coliseum. And we're taking it. There'll be more from that. Um, yep. The soldier who introduced himself as the host will gather a whole bunch of the armed guards around the estate and form a column behind you. And a lot of you can march your way over to the Coliseum. As the remaining butlers and servants pile up it was gold and books oh, I, yeah. and all I the... I juiced the, uh, the head servant as well. Um, I'm going to give him two bands of silver. Okay, excellent. Um, and they'll, they're just starting to pile up all of the valuables in the house, yeah. and then they're going to bring it over to Julia's house. Um, I don't take all of the guards. Obviously, I leave a contingent of guards to bring the stuff. Sure. You've got this head guy plus yep. um, one other actual leveled fighter, and then eight... Uh, just duders. And there's still going to be people to bring the stuff over? No, no, that, that's how many uh, oh, warriors okay. you have. Like eight eight thugs, eight, eight minions. Um, uh, I'm going to leave the head, head guy. Yeah. I'm going to leave the head guy. I'm going to take the half leader, and I'm going to leave um, four soldiers. Yeah. So you take the half leader and four soldiers, and you leave the leader and four soldiers. Yeah. Perfect. All right, then you head over to the Coliseum. Yeah, what's the situation with, like, the Coliseum? Are people, like, milling around in front of it? Are they all kind of inside it? Is there people in the seats? Is there, well, by the like, time you people... get to the Coliseum, um, it's much the same state as the house was, where it seems like it's in the in the moment is being sort of looted, or it was. You see there are six bodies near the front gate and wow. three dwarves standing nearby with pole arms facing in towards the Coliseum. One of them is like, you know, shaking some blood off the end of their stick as some of the people in the Coliseum with weapons are squaring off against them. But the dwarves have like, you know, reach weapons and they're in a narrow area. They seem to be keeping in these armed people in the Coliseum. I whisper to Cassian, uh, what's your family name, Cassian? Rin. Rin? Mm -hmm. I, uh, I take a step forward, like in front of our little band of soldiers that we've got here with Cassian at the back on the horse. And I will cast Thermaturgy on myself. And then in a booming voice, I will stand, say, uh, You stand before Lord Cassian Rin, slayer of Cassian Silverbars. His estate, his men, this arena and all he possesses now belong to Cassian. Make yourself known. Submit your fealty to him, and you will be rewarded in kind. The dwarves I'll turn. I'll speak up and say, Or die like, sh like he did. They snap their pole arms up in the air, stand at attention. Give me a persuasion check on top of that, Steermere. Oh, sorry. Yes. Uh, my persuasion's not great. Can I not have. No, just to throw the persuasion in. Oh. You're so good. Oh, yeah. Jesus. 19. That's All right. three 19s on the things that matter. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Yes, the guards snap to attention. The, the people inside drop their weapons and kind of form up into rows and lines. Um, and then you can see some other people like appearing from the back, filling the passageway that goes from inside 
um, to like the, the inner confines of the Colosseum where you would go to like get to your seats and go to find the gladiators and go to the, the little um, market area that would be in there, the Cassian cantina. Gonna change his demeanor a bit here. Um, he's gonna swap into more of like a showman like a friendly demeanor and um, kind of like laugh and throw out his hands and smile and say, where's my wealth? Bring it. <clears throat> one of the dwarves nudges the other one who turns and looks at one of the people inside and like snaps their head and uh, puts down the pole arm, draws a short sword and marches with the a couple of the folks they were just fighting with moments ago inside the arena. Um, and one of the outside dwarves says, oh, sir, we wait your orders. Bring me all the wealth that you have. Aye, sir. What is mine? A, a great deal. Any magic items? Potions. Uh, like this? I pull it from my belt and I show. Aye. Please. I flick him a, a band of copper. I, I flick him a band. I don't think he's going to look in at you. Uh, the, the ropes are... They allow... The, the coins are on the outside, so you can see ah, what it okay. is. I, yeah. I throw him a band of gold, then. Or, sorry, yeah. silver. Silver, yeah. You toss him another 50 silver, and he'll also hurry off inside, leaving his pole arm outside, drawing a short sword, going to the, the confines of the Colosseum. And after I, a few uh, minutes... Um, go ahead. Yeah, so there's a bit of a gap here as they all run off. I kind of look to up to Cassian to speak to him, to like whisper. I don't know if you like lean forward off the horse. Yeah, I lean. And I'll say, uh, so what's the plan here? We gather all the gold up and send it all over straight to Farseer? I nod. Gather the loot, gather the gold, gather the items, send it to Farseer. Um, the most and let me see what we can trade. The, the most important part is the deeds. I point to one dwarf. Bring me the um, the ownership documents for the Coliseum, please. I'd like those to be in my possession. Um, sorry, sir. I don't know where those are kept. Go find it. Go find someone who does. I, 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 I think. Oh, okay, sir. And hurries off. I throw him fifty silver. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, it'll take some time. One by one, the folks will come back. They will bring you the some of the wealth that's stored here in the Colosseum. I throw they it will on my bring cart. you yep, toss in the cart. They will bring you a chest that opens up and has like a grid inside of it. Like um there's it's a four by four grid with little holders where you could place potions mm, carefully so you nice. can transport them without them getting broken. Um, of the eight slots for potions, seven have potions in them. One is empty. Um these are I all put my potion healing. In there. Okay, the the other seven potions here you were told are greater healing potions. They do four d four plus four HP each. I pull one of those. I put it onto my backpack and I ask, "What is this?" And I show him the one that you have that you don't know. Yeah, I, I take one of those healing potions. Lord Cassius's potion of invisibility. He carries it on him in case he gets into a fight he can't handle. Boy, he died. <laughs> He's a coward. <clears throat> um, am I able to get the ownership documents? No, no one knows where those are kept. Um, whoever, probably Cassius, yeah. kept him in a secret safe somewhere. Probably there's actually probably a bit of cash stored in secret safes or a bit of magic items locked away that where these these people wouldn't know um and if you stuck um, around in town for a long time and yeah, i'll let her you know, handle that yeah well i think at this point i will say to cassian um shall i go back to fast here and check on stuff being delivered there and see what uh see what the next steps are you stay here and keep command of things i know right. i send two soldiers with you yeah okay <laughs> we walk off back to farcia's house as you walk to Farseer's house, you'll notice that in the streets, people are staring. People are looking and pointing and whispering. It hasn't taken long for the news to spread, and everywhere you go, you are gawked at, observed, revered in some situations. Yeah. He wouldn't like to admit it, but Stermia quite likes the attention, having been basically a nobody his entire life. Mm -hmm. He quite and likes you... this feeling of being a hero. 
You can see that there are armed individuals and spellcasters out here who under normal circumstances you might fear and you might be concerned about some, you know, a group of warriors, half orcs in armor with battle axes in hand and short swords at their sides who in theory could probably actually kill you right now, but mm. they don't know you. All they know is that you showed up today with the head of this person and they're That's not quite ready to take their their chances. Yeah. You know, they need a little information, more information about who these people are before they can make a move. But already you can see that there are, are threats on the horizons. There are, are a lot of people out there who want to be known as the folks who killed the folks who killed Cassius, right? That, yeah, that would make them even cooler. Uh, Cassius, so... when he came to town, was full HP. Looked mm -hmm. impeccable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just have a me. wound on yeah, you. Cassian, yeah. Um, um, so I get to Farsia's house with my two guards. Do I see people bringing gold here? You see that there is a cart inside the walls that has the items from the estate that have been brought here. Yes, it's all here. I, I, I call over one of the servants and say, I'd like to speak to Lady Julia if she's around. There are some oh, nods and coming... Just a heads up. While, mm -hmm. Sorry, while Nick's doing this, I'm going to the cleric quarter, or I'm sending someone to the cleric quarter to bring me a cleric who can speak with dead. Mm. I want to find those documents. Sorry. No, oh, good idea. Yeah. Mm. Lady. Uh, yeah, I asked to speak to Farseer. Yeah, yeah. Farseer will come down. She is flanked by many soldiers um, and will appear before you in the flesh. Ah, uh, Lady Julia, it's an honor. I do a little bow or whatever. Say, uh, already collecting the valuables from Cassius's estate, and we've taken control of the arena. Things are progressing as planned. What's our next move here, in terms of the transfer? I will make sure that happens. She looks at all the things, kind of flips through the, the, the stack a little bit. I think now is the time where you and your companion tell me of any specifics that you want. I can fill in gaps, I can make offerings, but if there's anything you need, now is the time well, to let me know. I'll have to discuss with Cassian, but as for right now, I could do with a, a shower, someone to trim my beard, my hair, polish my, you know, my things. Is that something you could provide for me? She points to the servants who brought this stuff. I look to them. They nod. A barber amongst you? Good. I need to look the part. If you'll come um, back to the estate, my lord, I, I can arrange everything there. Yeah, I go with them. Okay. I want to get looking looking good. I'm going to get my, like, because I've got all, like, uh... You have a glow bro up. <laughs> brooches and stuff in my beard, so I want to trim my beard. I want to get my brooches, like polished so they're like proper shining I get my like holy symbol like you know gleaming mm -hmm. um, I want to look impressive mm -hmm. I go uh, into a uh, dark room in the Colosseum maybe one of the back rooms that Cass Cassius had and used um, I bring the cleric in yeah I am looking for the information you're looking that you want um because it's going to come at a cost. You can get it done. Speak with dead. It's going to cost you 500 gold if you want to speak with a dead person. Yeah. Um, there should be gold here, right? That was brought for me. Yes. There's more than 500 gold available I'll, in this I'll pay, house. I'll pay the gold. Excellent. So speak with dead. You grant the semblance of life and intelligence to a corpse of your choice within range, allowing the, to answer questions you pose. The corpse must still have a mouth and can't be undead. If the spell fail, the spell fails if the corpse was the target of the spell within the last 10 days. Until the spell ends, you can ask the corpse up to five questions. The corpse knows only what it knew in life, including the languages it knew. Answers are usually brief, cryptic, or repetitive, and the corpse is under no compulsion to offer a truthful answer if you are hostile to it or if it recognizes you as an enemy. The spell well, doesn't return 
the creature's soul to its body, only animating its only its animating spirit. Thus, I the corpse get... can't learn new information, doesn't I'm comprehend anything that has happened since it died. No, 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 it's fine. Um, I assume that I get told this, correct? Yeah, when you ask you ask about these services, you get the the privacy statement that any conversation you have with this corpse is between you and the corpse, and the cleric is just here to observe it, and they won't pass it on. Furthermore, this is how the spell works, and blah 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 blah, and you get all are this there information. Any kids? Do I, are any of Cash's kids or wives um, here that I can round up? Yes. I bring him. Cassius yeah. has 15 children over many uh, different people. Uh, of those 15, five are still in the house and are brought yeah. before you. Who is his favorite of the five? Is his favorite here? Um, the oldest boy in the room, one who is only... Nope, that can't. That's not an acceptable answer. Eleven years old. Of the five present, this is the favorite one. I um, give him the questions to ask his father. Give um, me an intimidation check. Or I, I, don't, I don't know how I, you're going to get a child to ask its father's head some questions that'll benefit mm, you. I um, inform. Mm, hold on. Wait, can't you just get the cleric? Can't you just get the cleric to ask them? I might, but I'm going to try and get the kid to answer to ask. Can I try cool. a persuasion check here? Um, I, I mean, what's the, that, here's what's the, the persuasion, persuasion path? Here is. Mm. I want the child to ask three questions for me, and then he can ask his father any two. Um, I will pay for this, but I want him to ask my questions first. Is that kosher? Um, give me a persuasion check. We'll see. Oh oh. Killing yeah, it right now. Goes along with it, hundred percent. Okay, Nick, help me with the questions. Number question number one: Where are the doc? Where are the documents? To the call. Where are the, owner the ownership documents for the arena? Where are the ownership documents? Point blank. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The child asks, "Father, where are the ownership documents?" Um, just a moment. Oh, God. You want to go up, sir? In my heart, he says. Mm. In his heart. Mm. Maybe ask him if he had any magic items besides the potions. I throw that one forward. Father, now that you have passed the other side, did we pray tell have any magic items that I don't know about aside from the potions? Dearest father, please, please do grace me with your answer. Now that I am alone, magic items are the only thing that can comfort me. Give me just a moment here. <laughs> um, Father, do not be shy with your answer. It is me, your favorite son of five. <laughs> oh, that's <was> true. <laughs> Let me check all of my notes. I have so many. Cassius Silverbar's character sheet does not have any other magical items other than ability potion. Um, I don't think so. I think there are no magic items that would have been left in the house or anything like that. Mm. No, this is a merchant um, with very little 
No, no magic items. Okay. Okay. What's the last I mean, one, Nick? I don't know if we've really got any others beyond that. Maybe something about like um, dealing with Cork. Like, does he have any dirt on the Ogre Mage or something like that? Any way to control him? No. Um, maybe he owns a ship. That might be a good idea. Because yeah. mm. we do need a I ship. Actually, we need a ship. Yeah. Yeah. Ask the kid father, immediately uh, speaks up. Yeah, we have ships. Great. Ask your father what he means by. Uh, the documents are in his heart. Nick, how does the child? You speak so cryptically. You were so blunt in life. Please tell me, when you speak of the heart that holds the documents, do you speak of your heart? Are they inconsequential? Are they intangible? Or is this a ruse? Is there perhaps somewhere else where they lay rest? Somewhere more physical, tangible? Where I was born. I asked the child, where was, uh, where was Cassius born? Rithrahim, the dwarven city to the north. Hmm. All right, boy. I know I'm up there. I'll make you a deal. If you can find out where the documents are, um, you can take ownership of the estate. Okay. You have your two questions. You can ask anything you want. But if you wouldn't mind, I would appreciate. And I will give you ownership of the estate. What's your name? I hold out a hand. Little Jimmy. Oh, but me. He holds out a hand. That's what I was going to say, too. <laughs> uh, I've met many a little Jimmy. I shake his hand. You, my boy. Pat him on the back. Oh. Are the finest the ones. Oh. <laughs> Kid looks to the the corpse. Poses the first question. Are you at peace? And the the head, mouth opens, and bobs back and forth, and out comes yes kid furrows his brow when when I didn't eat my peas when I was seven and you said that you didn't love me did you mean it yes <laughs> <laughs> It'd be this kid would be lucky if he could sit at the dinner table with his father at the age of seven are you kidding it must have been his uh, birthday true, or something yeah. yeah it was his birthday um, yeah <laughs> I let you sit at my table you don't even eat your fucking peas get out of my sight I hate you hmm Kid asks, Dad, it's me, little Jimmy. Where's mommy? Um, and the, the head replies, With me. Kid get looks sad. Right. And the ritual's over. And our party can think about what they want from Julia. Yeah. And yeah. we will get to that next session. But before yes. we close out this session, we're gonna take one more trip to Haven. One more trip to see our two friends on the beach and see what they're up to. Um, so folks on the beach, you are no longer on the beach actually. Um, you're inside by the pool. Time has passed. You've seen your, your friends make it to the city and all of the actions that have happened since then. You see them talk to Julia, gather around Cassius's supplies. You saw the little funeral that they gave you. Very, very short, very brief, very few words were said. And um, now you see them rolling in riches, having servants shave their necks, dripping in gold and armor and weapons with ships at their service. Um, and you see them handing over great swaths of information and items and wealth to Julia Farseer, the one who sent you to Cork, the one who brought you into this situation. Um, and what what is going through the minds of the waiting and watching characters? 
Um, Vashir is kind of watching this a little bit impassively. He's kind of started to accept that he's dead. And he's really just hanging around with Roy until Roy is ready to move on. But Vasher wants to see the quest through. And uh, he kind of turns to Roy and he says, they've got all this wealth and money and power, but they don't realize the value of that horse. <laughs> <laughs> The horse is the key. <laughs> and uh, he'll turn to Roy and tell Roy the story of how he got the horse. And that oh. the horse was actually his friend <laughs> who got turned into a horse when he found an <laughs> ogre magi in the forest. <laughs> this is a story we've talked about. This is not made up on the spot. This is a legit backstory right here. Uh, he, t he tells him the horse's real name, which was Finnegan. Um, and that him and Finnegan used to go wandering in the forest, and there was uh, an ogre magi in the forest that... Uh, I think it was an ogre magi. I can't remember. We didn't really hammer out the details. But, uh, yeah. This is mostly for the viewers. That Vasher's storyline was meant to be why he cared about the horse so much was that it was his friend that was turned into a horse, and he was trying to turn him back. <laughs> Unlucky. <laughs> Roy will listen um, intently because this is the one way you can actually get Roy to um, stop crying in a situation like this. Um, yeah, I'll give him lots of information. I'll tell him about Finnegan. Me and Finnegan used to go into the woods and we used to hunt around for things. And, uh, you know, we would try and capture deer and tame them. But obviously deer are wild animals that are kind of skittish. And, uh, yeah, this one day we stumbled on a thing and he got transformed into a horse and I rode him home and never told anyone where he disappeared to. I said he must have got lost in the forest because I was ashamed and embarrassed that I, I you know, led my friend into a dangerous situation. That's... Finnegan must, Finnegan must be out there so scared. You know... The first couple days, he had a lot of humans still in him, but I think he's been a horse so long. Like, when I look into his eyes, I mean, I see Finnegan, but I don't see Finnegan looking back. I think he's scamp now. I wonder if, if he dies, if he's going to come here as a horse. Like, Vasher will, like, lean back never thought about that and um Roy will just kind of look out and um and he, he's just gonna look into the distance it's a cry a little bit more pet Vika and dark... uh, go, ahead. go ahead no no go ahead uh I always Roy's appreciate just gonna it, whisper Vika. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because me and Finnegan have got the same kind of thing going on. He's my he's my little buddy. All right, go on. I mean, he's not real. But, but like, recoil. No. He's real to us. I'm sorry As... I always held you guys back. No, Roy. We held each other back. We shouldn't have fought so much. We should have worked together. Uh, Roy's gonna give him a hug. Aww. As you Flash embrace, hug him back. you can look out over the darkened skies with no clouds or moisture, just a, the stars that are out there. Across this small, it must be some sort of island, since there's water and you can kind of hear waves in the distance in other directions. The land is not quite jungly, but it's it's verdant with some palm trees and some nice large bushes. And it's gently hilly with winding paths and small cobblestones that look worn by time. You'll see a few other people wandering around the area. You'll see the bartender come through again when he says it's slow out front. 
He lets you know that the two of you can stay here as long as you want. Um, but when you're ready, you can move on. Um, lets you know that when you do move on, you'll be able to look back on your life. Look back and see the other various moments of your life. Kind of go through it and revisit it. And that is that is where you will end up. That is the, the end for you. Vasher nods and says, thank you. I I think I'll stay here until until I see what becomes of my friends. I really hope they call us the Waystars. Roy says as he looks over. And the just bartender says, shakes his head. They're not going to call you the Waystars. <laughs> we'll call Cheers. ourselves the Waystars. And I'll raise my drink and say to the Waystars. And with that, we're going to end our session. Can we get we XP? will get XP. <laughs> yes. Nice. Um, it is 9,200 divided by the remaining two party members, so 4,600 each. <laughs> Nick, Holy we shit. did it. <laughs> <laughs> that was the only way to level up, was to sacrifice uh, two of them. Um, and we'll deal each. with all the level up stuff and our new characters next time. Well, on the Nick, Lazarus expedition. The you yes. actually got what you want. You you went back to town and you had a long rest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I and... said we'd get in some shit, didn't I? All go. right, everyone. We're going to be going to the after show. So if you're a Patreon subscriber of the $5 an episode tier, you can Thank come, you. tune in, and check it out. Um, we're probably going to talk a bit about the deaths, maybe into the new character ideas um, and stuff like that. It is only for the patrons, so make sure to go to patreon.com slash save or die. It, all of the after shows are there, by the way. So if you start now, you have like eight or nine after shows that you can go back and watch too, where there was a ton of info. Um, so check it out. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. And we'll catch you next week or the week after that. Thanks for watching. Bye.